here. It'll be Anthony at his own 15. And knocked to the ground at the 23-yard line. Great coverage by the Auburn Tigers. Takeo spikes with a hard hit. Boy, will that set the tempo for this crowd in a hurry. Danny Warfel, a man who leads the way for the Florida Gators, you look at what he's done this year. Over 1,300 yards in the air with the 13 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Last year, of course, split time with Terry Dean. It's his job right now. He ranks number one in this conference, the SEC. He's sixth nationally in the quarterback rating. Three receivers in. And a first down from scrimmage for the Florida Gators. Gordon, Anthony, and Hilliard, the receivers, work for the throw. And dropped by Rudell Anthony at the 25-yard line. It was in his hands all day long. We may see that, though. It is wet. It's been raining all day long. And a chilly starting lineups. The backs and receivers for the Florida Gators, Mobley, Jackson, Allen, and Doring, and Ike Hilliard, the leading receiver on this team. Yeah, all Florida's offensive skill people are fast. They're talented. There's a lot of depth there. Hilliard had six touchdowns already this year. There's the offensive line. Jason Odom, an All-American candidate, and certainly a first-round draft pick next year in the NFL. Well, so it's second and 10 from the 24-yard line. And Werfel to throw again. Wide open is Anthony. He drops this one. The coverage by LaRon Thomas, but that's a ball he should have caught. Thomas almost had the interception. If he was watching the ball instead of the receivers, he could have had the pick. So Werfel 0 for 2, but he's had two drops already by his receivers. Another look at the offensive line along with Odom. You've got Reggie Green, Jeff Mitchell, Donnie Young, and Mo Collins. Young a little bit banged up today. Yeah, that's a good point, too, because this is a solid line, but the guards all banged up. Not only Donnie Young, but Kevin Johnson and Story, who's a freshman, will get some playing time. Four receivers in on third and ten. You've got trips to the near side. And Werfel drops it. Picked up at the 20. Anthony Harris to the end zone. Spagnola talked about it in the open. It is a wet field, that ball on the ground, and already turnovers playing a big part. They have done so the last two meetings between these two schools. Nine takeaways by Auburn over the last two years make it ten with this one right here in the touchdown. That's the easy way to get them. Here's Matt Hawkins, 21 out of 23, now 22 out of 24 on the year. An extra point, so the Auburn Tigers strike first with the turnover. Bad exchange, Anthony Harris, 53, just has easy pickings. Nobody's even around the ball. He picks it up. He could walk in and score. And Auburn with the early lead. Ohio State meets Wisconsin in a Big Ten battle. Oklahoma takes on Texas. Or Washington State tackles Southern Cal. Part of an ABC College football doubleheader. Next. What a start to this one here at uh, Jordan-Harris Stadium. If it was loud when it started, it's deafening now after that touchdown. Tim. Actually, it's the same old story, just told a different way. The takeaways by Auburn, the turnovers by Florida, and the Tigers have the lead. Nine turnovers the last two years in these two meetings by the Florida Gators. Auburn is yet to turn the ball over. Matt Hawkins with his second kickoff of the day, and there's Riedel Anthony. Looking for room, they're not going to find any. Back out to the 24-yard line, just about where they started their first series. Marcus Camp, a backup linebacker, made the stop. And Steve Spurrier's got to find a way now to try to settle his troops, Tim. Well, you look at his record. He has not beaten Bowden here in Auburn. You have to, he has to be wondering, hey, what do I have to do? I've scored 68 points in the last two years and haven't beaten this guy, Terry Bowden, who has not lost here at home. And Terry Bowden, the only SEC coach to beat Steve Spurrier down in the slump. That was last year. So it's first and ten at the 23. Remember on the first series, there were a couple of drop passes. Danny Werfel was on target. And here's the give to his back, and that is Terry Jackson straight ahead. Pretty good game. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. 
and the defensive front that uh, Florida will face today. Shannon Suttle, Jimmy Brumbaugh, Mark Smith, very young, very inexperienced. You've got a freshman, a sophomore, and a junior there. Yeah, graduation decimated the line. They're just now coming together. But what they've done is they've gone to a 3-4 because look at this. They've got some outstanding linebackers. I mean, Solomon, Harris, Miska, Mostella. I mean, these guys are outstanding. And Harris, a strong linebacker, of course, has a touchdown already. Second and two, and here's Jackson wrapped up in the backfield. He's going to lose about four. Marcellus Mostella, we just talked about him. He was in there first. 47 is one of the top outside linebackers in the country. He's coming off an SEC Player of the Week award against Ole Miss. He's got four sacks here. The tackle in the backfield just came off the corner, showing his speed and agility. The thing is, he doesn't miss many tackles when he gets there either. That's an awfully good linebacking core. Here's the defensive backfield, Martavius Houston, only a freshman out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida, but a very talented freshman. And this is a group that just wants to play solid, not forcing that many turnovers this year. On third and six, Wolfel to the air. This one's picked off at the 32. Charles Rose with the interception. And an awful start for Danny Warfel and the Florida Gators. Boy, you can say that again, Terry. Number one, a bad exchange for a touchdown. That should never happen, and this is a poor throw. They're in a zone, and he just throws it up for grabs. Over throws, and the safety who's playing free, Charles Rose, comes up. He's got the easy interception. It's a terrible start for Danny Warfel, and I'll tell you, Steve Spurrier won't hesitate to pull a guy. This is the game last year that Terry Dean lost his number one job. Well, having some choice words on the sideline as well with Danny Warfel. I don't think Warfel ever saw Rose. There was a penalty on that play, but it was a hold against Florida. So obviously, Auburn declined the penalty, and they take over first and 10 at the 32. Now, Auburn will try to keep him. They've got him down a little bit, a little disarray. No huddle. Get right out and go at him. Fred Beasley, the fullback, and he's alone back in the backfield right now. And Nick's out of the shotgun. Over the middle and broken up. The intended receiver was Andy Fuller, and he had a big game last year. James Bates, the inside linebacker, the man who broke up that pass. Patrick Nix last week, 23 out of 28, 274 yards. An incredible first half, too, Tim. T, he was 18 of 19 in the first half. <laughs> it went through one streak where he hit 14 in a row. Actually, it was 19 out of 19, but it was an interception. That's right. So it was point. completed. But. Sometimes the other guys are the only ones open. <laughs> Second and 10 after the drop pass. Actually, the pass that was broken up. So Beasley. And Stephen Davis in the backfield, and here's Davis on the reverse. Robert Baker with the spin, and not getting a whole lot up to the 30-yard line. So a little trickery from Terry Bowden early on. That Chester defensive tackle made the stop. And a chilly starting lineup for Auburn. The backs and receivers, Beasley, Davis, Fuller, Gaucher, and Goodson. Stephen Davis last year, the leading rusher in the SEC. Yeah, he's got eight 100-yard games in his career, 162 yards last week. This is a solid blocking group as a whole. Big play capability out of all of them. And Terry Bowden adjusting his offensive scheme a little bit this year because defensive have stacked the line against the run. So Davis not getting as many carries. But these plays right here are scripted. Then he'll get into a rhythm and he'll start to feel the game and just call it by feel. Third and eight from the 30. Knicks, a long pass that was almost picked off. That is a dangerous pass. And Fred Weary, the man who picked off two last week against LSU, almost had the interception. You know what Fred Weary gives you? He's just a sophomore, and he's not a big guy, but he breaks on the ball as quickly as anybody. Watch this. All right, now he sees the pass. Here he comes. Look at the explosion. You mentioned the two picks last week he had. He almost had one there. Probably should have had it. Look at it. He knows it, too. That's a tough pass to throw, though. You've got to have an awfully good arm to throw to the, the wide side of the football field on that out. And Nick's not a guy who's known for his great arm. And here's Matt Hawkins on for the 47-yard field goal attempt. You look at what he's done this year, his long 47 in his career. Running away, and it is good. The senior out of Pensacola, Florida, puts Auburn on the board once again. So the two turnovers have led to 10 Auburn points. And this place is rocking at his been all day long. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. GTE, with GTE, it's amazing what we can do together. And Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. 
10-0 Auburn. Leading it here with 12.06 left in the first quarter of play. The two turnovers, the fumble on the uh, exchange from center to quarterback, and then the interception has led to those two scores. And once again, Matt Hawkins set to kick it off. And again, it goes to Riedel Anthony at his own 10. Up the middle, he's got a seat. And a lot of room. Inside the 10, he's going all the way. Reed Al Anthony. Did I say a track meet with yard lines? 90 yard kickoff return by Reed Al Anthony. And Florida is right back. Give Anthony a lot of credit, but watch the hole that opens up. Bingo, right there. Look at it. Anthony sees it. Now he just puts a move right here inside out and then explodes. I'm telling you, he's got 4-3 speed in the 40, and right here uses every bit of it to pull away on that touchdown run. Well, it's the third one he's returned today, Timmy, so I guess practice makes perfect. This time, he cut back inside. He had tried the right sideline twice, and that didn't work. But how about the quick strike by the Florida Gators? Bart Edmiston on for the extra point. It is up and it is good. And did we say shootout? You mentioned the third one he's returned today. There's no question this was a middle return. They blasted a hole and his speed carried him home. This is a long and storied series, of course, between the Florida Gators and the Auburn Tigers. And back in 1912, on October 12th, the date for the first ever meeting between the Tigers and the Gators. The final score, 27 to 13, Auburn on top. The start of the 72-year history. And we might have that score by the end of the first quarter here, Timmy. Auburn leads this series 39-30 and 2. It has been a classic. So Matt Teague getting set to kick off for Florida. And back deep for Auburn, you've got Eric Hines Tucker, number 30, and number 18, Robert Baker. And it will go to Eric Hines Tucker at the 12. Straight ahead and up to the 29-yard line. So a pretty good return for the Auburn Tigers. And let's check in with John Spagnola down on the field. Well, even though it rained quite a bit this morning before the ball game, this field drains very well. You can see not a lot of water splashing up, guys. I don't think the problem's going to be footing. I think Reedell Anthony is a good example of that. The ball is going to get wet. He dropped the first two passes, but on that 90-yard touchdown ben. return, he was able to cut very well. So the footing is good, but the ball is going to be wet. They only use eight footballs per half ben, in this football game. Ben, John, I'm not sure that uh, the weather conditions had anything to do with at least the interception, maybe the snap from center, but it uh, does look very dry out there. There's a yeah, penalty. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. They didn't have enough men on the, right, on the same side of the line, the ball. They refuse a penalty. It'll be first down right here. You know, Terry, I disagree with you when you say you're not sure it had anything to do on the interception because I think all the passes so far have been a little bit soft. They've wobbled a little bit. I'm not sure the quarterbacks here are getting a good grip on a wet football. I think so. Even the first two drops by uh, the uh, Florida Gators. Take a look right now at the offensive line for the Auburn Tigers and Willie Anderson. Again, a little bit banged up. He bruised his knee last week in the game against Mississippi State, but uh, a strong, strong offensive line, one of the best in college football. It's definitely the best, best in the South. And Anderson, the All-American, he's got that sore knee as you mentioned, one of the top five tackles in America. Just talking to Jake Hallam, a scout for the Eagles. He, he's looking at Anderson hard today, too, but knows he's banged up. Here's Stephen Davis out of the eye. Tries the right side and gains about five up to the 34-yard line. Mark Campbell, the defensive end, made the hit. And a pretty good defensive line for the Florida Gators, but they've been banged up this year. Johnny Church, David Barnard, Ed Chester, and Mark Campbell, an all-SEC performer, the most experienced man on this defensive front. But they've had injuries throughout, especially their defensive tackle. Well, Campbell's the only returning starter. That's sure. This was uh, fifth in the nation against the run last year. Graduation hit him hard. But they've got solid linebackers led by Ben Hanks. 39 starts. He's durable. He's dependable. He's quick. And he's... He's really confident. Second and six out to Fred Beasley. He's got room up the near sideline. Across the 50 to the 46-yard line of Florida. And a big gain finally stopped by Dexter Daniels, number 48, the linebacker for the Gators. And a gain of 21 on the play. The defensive backs for the Gators 
Weary with the two interceptions last week against LSU. Wright Harris and Anton Lott. Lawrence Wright, a big-time hitter at strong safety. Weary almost had an interception in this game already. This entire defense, it's a good mix of experience and youth. Five senior starters, four five, or five freshmen in that two-deep group when you look at the two deeps. So it's, it's a good mix. Out of the eye again for the Auburn Tigers on first and ten at the 46. And here goes Stephen Davis looking for room. And he won't find much. Maybe a gain of a yard. That's about it. That entire defensive front led by David Barnard on the tackle. And this is how the two have matched up in terms of statistics this year, the Auburn offense and the uh, Florida defense. Well, Auburn leads in rushing. They're number one in the SEC. They also are number one in total offense. And uh, Florida defensively is not as strong as it was last year, especially against the run. They ranked fifth in the nation against the run last year. And, of course, they've dropped that off about 50%. You expect to see a lot of uh, Stephen Davis today, then? Well, I do. You're going to see now that Terry Bowden's getting away from his script. He's going to get into a feel. What they do so well, Auburn with the run sets up the play action and the passing downfield. Second and 10 at the 46, hits like, the throw. Like this. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. Number 40, Johnny Church, with a left hand up in the air. And Nix was not under pressure. Johnny Church was right at the line, but perfect timing on the leap. Keep it on the right side of your screen. Watch this. Here's the play action we just talked about. But you defeat a blocker, you get up off the ground, and then you use your wingspan to get up high. Church is 6'4". He's got that huge wingspan. That's good timing. That's just great athletic ability. Johnny Church, a senior out of Fort Myers, Florida. Former linebacker and played a little tight end in his career as well. See how agile he is for almost 270 pounds. So it brings up third and 10 at the 46. And Patrick Nix back to the shotgun. Over the middle and almost intercepted at the 31, and I'm not sure what Nix was looking at that time. Mike Harris almost had the INT. I can tell you what he's not looking at. He's not looking at the free safety. They come in with a nickel back. They go out, and he goes right into coverage. There's the free safety, 13. Harris, who came in, he's the nickel guy. He played underneath. Right, the strong safety's playing deep. He's got the backside. He had to thread that thing and couldn't do it, especially with a wet football. Tyrone Goodson, the intended receiver, but it was nowhere near him. So it brings up fourth down. And Matt Hawkins, the place kicker, also the punter on this team. And Sirola Palmer, a senior out of Lacombe, Louisiana, back deep. And the ball's on the ground. And look who it is. It's Church again. He had a great series. Well, we've talked about the wet conditions, and I guess it proves you right. I guess it has had a lot to do with everything that's happened so far. I mean, the interception, the fumble, and now the drop by Matt Hawkins. That was a good snap. The toughest thing about a wet ball, Terry, is not so much that it gets slippery, but it gets very heavy. Now, this hits his hands, and it doesn't feel normal, and he just drops it. He's waiting for a light ball to come in there that he can ex explode through. Never did because of the weight of the football. So Florida takes over with a great field position now at the 44-yard line of the Auburn Tigers and Werfel the throw. Up to Hilliard and complete at the 19-yard line. A perfect pass from Danny Werfel to Ike Hilliard. And a gain of 25 on first down for the Gators. Larry Melton was a defensive back on this. Watch number 28 in the blue jersey. This is a fine pass, but 28 falls. That's Melton. So Hilliard, all he has to do is just pull it in to keep his feet down. But Mark Smith with a lot of pressure on Werfel, too. He took a hit. So it's first and 10 at the 19 now, and Danny Werfel changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Only Terry Jackson in the backfield. For the end zone for Hilliard and through his hands. Good coverage by Melton that time, but Hilliard still had a chance to bring that one in. Would have been a heck of a catch, though. You know what's ironic? This is the first offensive threat we've had all afternoon by either team. Everything's been turnovers and kickoff returns. Good move by Hilliard here, but a good recovery by Melton, 28. Just barely gets a hand on it to knock it away and at least block it out of the eyesight of uh, Hilliard. Well, obviously, they're challenging Larry Melton, the sophomore out of Valdosta, Georgia. And now Elijah Williams in that tailback for Terry Jackson on second and 10. Trips to the far side, four receivers in. Wolfel to the end zone to an open Hilliard. And incomplete. Melton again on the coverage. But Hilliard was open, open across the middle, Tim. 
He was open and the ball looked like it was there. That should have been caught. Again, the ball was not well thrown. It's not a hard pass. It was wobbling. There's not a tight spiral on it. Watch the velocity on this thing. Again, Hillier with good move right here. Watch this. Out in. He's already got him. He created space, separated from the defender. That ball looked like it was catchable. It like it floated a little bit on Warfel, but certainly, yeah, it was a ball that could have been caught by Hillier. Local well, now one of six for 25 yards and one interception. Florida puts so much pressure on the defensive backs. Hilliard incomplete off his hand. And so the Auburn Tigers defense holds after the great field position by the Gators. And Marcellus Mostella on the coverage. And Warfel will trot to the sidelines and we'll have a field goal attempt. You know, one thing Warfel's getting is plenty of time. That's going to cost Auburn later. They've got to put some pressure on him or he's just going to pick them apart eventually. Here's Bart Edmiston. who is one out of three. That's all he's attempted this year. That's how good the Florida offense has been. As long as the 22-yarder, and this is a 36-yard field goal attempt. Up. And no good. He missed it. Steve Spurrier just shakes his head. He says, we're giving them things. We're turning the ball over. We're missing field goals. We've got our opportunities. Heck, here's a guy that scored 68 points against Auburn the last two years and still hadn't won. Six points have separated these two teams the last two years. Say, two of the, the great college games. You look at the 94 season and 93 season and uh, just terrific. And another one going on right now. Some of the other action in the SEC, Georgia Bandy. Arkansas, Ole Miss, South Carolina, Mississippi State, and LSU, much improved LSU against Kentucky. And how about the big one? Up the road about three hours. Tennessee well, you don't think Alabama. Terry, you don't think that has the attention of everybody here. Auburn's pulling for Tennessee tonight. Florida's pulling for Alabama. They're already talking about it. A lot of folks heading up the highway to that one after this. Stephen Davis to the outside in a game of about eight. Up to the 28-yard line. Dexter Daniels made the stop. I'm going to tell you, Stephen Davis, certainly one of the best running backs in the country. The NFL scouts love his combination of size, speed, and strength. He's 6'3", 230 pounds. Last week, he had six runs of 10 yards or more. That's the kind of running back that this Florida defense has to deal with today. Second and three at the 27. And again, out of the eye, two receivers to the near side. The sweep right. Davis cuts back. Across the 30, he has the first down up to the 32-yard line. So they'll move the chains. Lawrence Wright, the strong safety, the first man to meet Stephen Davis. I think that ball came loose. Auburn gets it back and gets the first. Now, Stephen Davis on the year has not had as many carries as we've talked about. He had 20 carries last week and 162 yards, and that was the most that he's rushed all season. This is a guy who led the SEC in rushing last year. He is a man who they have pumped up for the Heisman this year, and at this point in the middle of the season, he just hasn't had the carries. But they've really geared the offense to what the defense has given them. And Terry says he's not going to give him 35 carries a game just to win the Heisman. If the defense is taking him away, he's going to go to something else that works. Nicks to Willie Gosey out in the flat. And a good move still on his feet. But he doesn't gain a whole lot after the move and run out of bounds. Dexter Daniels again on the tackle. We'll get some of the other games in the Big 8 today. Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa State, Kansas. Some surprises out in the Big 8, huh? With the uh, Colorado loss last week. What a day of upsets we had last week. You know, with Nebraska and Florida State taking the one-two spots, Florida's just sitting back and not getting, certainly, the publicity that the other two are getting. Everybody's talking about how many points those two teams need to stay number one. This Florida and Auburn both very dangerous teams and both still talk about a national championship. Well, Auburn with more to lose in that sense today because they have one loss already on the year. And they run Stephen Davis right into the heart of the defensive front and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. And yet when you talk to Terry Bowden, he knows the exact formula he needs for a national championship. Number one, he's got to win the, the rest of the way. But if he beats Florida today and then Florida turns around and beats Florida State, right. they play the last weekend of the regular season, you know, then it, it's, a, it's a shot. They've got a shot. Of course, then comes the SEC championship game, which will be right here on ABC. And uh, for the first time in Terry Bowden's reign here at Auburn, they have a chance to play in that game. And a chance to play Florida twice in one year. Oh, what a party, huh? Third and fourth to 37 out of the shotgun. Nick's rolling up the field. 
and it intercepted at the 41 yard line. Lawrence right on the diving grab. What a pick. And Nix doesn't think so. No, Nix is complaining, number one, that he thought he was out of bounds. Number two, he didn't think he had control of it and let it go too early when he hit. Boy, this is so unusual for a guy like Patrick Nix. He does not make many mistakes. He does not turn the ball over very often. This pass again, it's a heavy wobbling pass. Now watch this. Let's see number one if his feet are down, see if he ever has possession. No, that ball went through his arms and was loose. That is incomplete and now is being ruled that way. Timmy, they've changed the call. You're exactly right. So uh, maybe Patrick Nix will be a lawyer someday. He uh, was able to get the officials to overrule that. Well, I think the back judge had a pretty good view of it, too. He came in and overruled. So Matt Hawkins on to punt once again as Auburn has stopped on this series, but no turnover. So it's fourth and four from the 37, and now the Tigers want a timeout. The first one that's been called on the day, and really the first chance we've had to take a breather, and we will do that and be back in a moment. Tonight on ABC, brand new episodes of Jeff Foxworthy Show, and maybe this time starring Marie Osmond and Betty White. And then a world premiere movie, Picture Perfect, starring Home Improvement's Richard Karn, Grace Under Fire's Dave Thomas, and Mary Page Keller. It's all new Saturday night here on ABC. Well, that's your lineup tonight. Your lineup right now is uh, Auburn up by three, 6.50 left here in the first, and a lot of scoring going on, as you would imagine. He didn't get the punt off last time, and they're coming with a pretty good rush again. Hawkins gets it away this time. A high punt and a good one. And it drives Anthony back to the 20, and he gets through. And knocked to the ground at the 32-yard line. Anthony, who had a 90-yard kickoff return a few moments ago. This time returns the punt of 43 yards, 11 yards back to the 32. So Florida takes over. At its own 32-yard line, here's how they match up. Offensively, Florida, of course, in the air, leading the SEC. They've done most of their damage that way. And second in the SEC to the Auburn Tigers in terms of overall yardage, total yardage. Yeah, and we told you about the graduation that the Auburn defense had. They lost their, their front, so they changed to a 3-4 in hopes they get their linebackers more involved. And that's the kind of thing that can help them in a game like this because now you're dealing with your back seven. That's where your experience is, one against the passing team. And so far, so good. The only damage that's been done has been on the kickoff team, the return team. There is a man who is injured on the field right now. Brent Turner. Hey, Brent Turner is down. He got tried to throw a block out in front here, tried to make a tackle. Watch him. 62 right there in the middle of your screen goes up and over, and watch what happens. His, his knee just got caught. That was no real contact. He just got caught in the turf. Yeah, it looked like he just popped on him. It's like one of those injuries that uh, takes place on AstroTurf quite a bit when the, the cleat gets caught in the turf. He twists the knee. So we will take a break and be back in a moment. And Brent Turner, the man who was down injured, is walking off the field right now. Auburn leading it 10 to 7 with just over six and a half minutes left in this one. And take a look at Hawkins on the last punt. He didn't get the first one off, and this time bobbles a little bit, too. I'm telling you, he's having trouble fielding it. This guy's a triple threat. Place kicker, punter, kickoff specialist, and a scholarship saver when you can do all three. <laughs> so first down at the 32. Jermaine Allen in motion, the tight end, and here goes Fred Taylor, the leading rusher from a year ago. Knocked out of bounds up at the 35-yard line by Mark Smith, the defensive end. Some story when you look at the three-headed monster at tailback for the Florida Gators. Terry Jackson, the former strong safety, came on in the spring practice with injuries to Elijah Williams and Fred Taylor, who was the leading rusher last year. And now he's number three on the depth chart, but he gets a lot of snaps. Yeah, that's a good point. Remember Tyrone Baker had that reconstructive knee surgery? That was in February. Then Eli Williams was hurt in the spring, and Fred Taylor, as you mentioned, went down. So Jackson, the freshman, steps in. He's a former safety on defense. They had to actually teach him the plays during scrimmages on the run. There goes Allen in motion again, and here is Fred Taylor, and whistles are blown. There are flags all over the place. And we'll sort it out. We have a dead ball. Got a false start on the offense. Be a five-yard penalty. Well, you had Tremaine Allen, the tight end, in motion. So 
when no one else obviously is allowed to move, and perhaps that's what's happened. We'll go down to the sidelines right now, check in with John Spagnola. John? Brent Turner is having his knee worked on, guys. He looks like he's in pretty much pain. Now, keep in mind, he's the long snapper on the punt team, and if he goes down, they have to go to their second string long snapper right now. They've already had one fumbled snap uh, on the punt, so this could be a problem for the Auburn punt team. All right, John, they're working on Turner on the sidelines still. It is Werfel back to pass. And incomplete. Fred Taylor, the intended receiver, Marcellus Mostella, was there, and he never did look back to make a play on the football. Just raised the arms up. Never looked back, but he was going out here, and he was not trying to, to get any contact. Watch this. He's in a zone, just starts to run with him. Actually, there was contact, and I can't believe that there's no flag. And you know, Mostella's thinking about that, too. Anytime there's contact and the ball's in the air, and he's not looking back, if he's looking back, he has as much right to the ball as the other guys. Absolutely. But here he's not looking back. There's contact. I'm surprised there wasn't a flag. He looked right to the official after the play, too. Yeah, he felt guilty. Uh-huh. Third and 11 for Werfel. Under pressure and down he goes. At the 25-yard line, Terry Solomon on the blitz. And let's step away and go to New York to John Saunders for an update. Terry, plenty of action where you are in the SEC and in the Meadowlands as well. Notre Dame against Army. This is Autry Denson, who's in for Randy Kinder, who's injured, gets the ball 25 yards to the 11, sets up Mark Edwards. Little touchdown plunge here. And the Irish lead Army 14-7 at the end of the first quarter. All right, John, the big win last week by the Irish at Washington. Come from behind win. And now on top again today. So it's fourth and 17 after the sack. And the Gators punt it away. Robbie Stevenson back to the 31-yard line. Robert Baker looking for room. Trying to get to the near sideline. Back to the 39 and a nifty run by Robert Baker. The tackle made by Ben Hanks. So a 44-yard punt, a nine-yard return, but he ran about 30 to 35 yards getting it back nine. Can't decide whether to go left or right. Finally sees a wall forming on the right side. Tries to get behind it, but watch this. He cuts between the two defenders right there. Dangerous play by lifting the ball. But great feet, tremendous vision. He almost broke it. Baker was almost on the loose. Well, this week on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Raiders travel to Mile High Stadium to take on the Denver Broncos. A classic AFC West matchup. Hostetler against John Elway. It all begins at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, Monday night here on ABC Sports. Nicks to throw on first down. Willie Gaucher at the 36. And knocked out of bounds by Anton Watt. What a perfect pass from Patrick Nix and a 16-yard completion. That is his best pass of the day. That time Patrick Nix threw off his back foot, got some velocity on it, knew where he was going. He understood what defense Florida was in. He read it well. It's a zone. Watch him step up and throw with authority over the linebacker, under the safety, and the ball is perfectly thrown for the first down. So they move the chains. Right now, Terry Bowden wants to get something done offensively. Patrick. All his points have come on turnovers. He wants to get this offense going. That's my point. Patrick Nix trying to get something going. You saw three for eight. Danny Worth was only one for seven. Tyrone Gibson over the middle. Inside the 10 to the 9. Fred Weary on the coverage and the tackle, but a gain of 35 from Nix to Goodson. Boy, Goodson had five receptions last week. You know, Jimbo Fisher talks about Nix and says he's improved so much because of his knowledge of the offense. He knows where his receivers are and where they're going to come free. Here, he leads it right in between the quarterback and the safety. Again, it's a pass with velocity and authority. And watch it. He knows it's a good pass. And again, he read the defense. And he picked it apart and hit the seam. Two of the top quarterbacks in the country in terms of pass efficiency. And uh, Patrick Nix getting the better game of the right now. Here goes Steven Davis. Can't get to the outside, although he falls ahead for a gain of maybe a yard and a half, two yards. Lawrence Wright, the strong safety, made the tackle. That was indecision on the part of Davis, who was trying to do too much on a wet field. We've already talked about the footing. He got the block. He had to explode it inside, but instead tried to put a move and went outside and couldn't get it. Now watch Davis. The block is to the outside. If he comes through right there, there's a hole. He explodes. He gets five yards. Instead, he gets too cute, tries to go outside, and actually loses a yard. Lawrence Wright had 12 tackles a year ago against the Auburn Tigers and a big, big hitter. So second and goal from the nine. And Nix goes down. There goes the football. 
Oh, good play by Nix. Hanks came on the blitz and Nix threw it away. Florida wants intentional grounding. Yeah, he got the got the arm going forward, but uh, you see Ben Hanks who came in, he wanted to fumble or intentional grounding. Either one, and he got neither. Now that's a smart play by Nix. He just threw it away and took his chances. But the one thing he didn't want to do is take the sack. He read the blitz, felt Nix, and there's the ball, the pass. He's just thrown it away. Well, he threw it right to the ground, Timmy. Yeah, but watch. He's making it look like the hit makes it happen. Boom. See? That's a smart play on the part of Patrick Nix. There's no question it's a smart play, but if I'm Steve Spurrier, I'm thinking intentional grounding. Let's go down to John Spagnuolo for a moment. Change up his snap count because they timed that uh, blitz perfectly and Hanks went through unimpeded. Back to you. So Nick's needing a different cadence. Here's third and nine, a flag on the play. Out to Andy Fuller and he drops it. There's a flag thrown right about the line of scrimmage or maybe a little bit behind the line. This is going to be against Auburn for holding, so it would have been nullified anyway, but Fuller's got to be saying, what is up with that? I've got to make that catch. He caught a touchdown pass. In each of the last two games, he averages 15 yards a catch. They don't look for him that often, so he's usually isolated on a linebacker, but that ball was well thrown, and here's your holding. On the offense was declined. It's going to be fourth down. Andy Fuller with a huge game last year against Florida. He had seven catches for 115 yards, and he only had three catches all year to that point. And, uh, yep, right in the hands. You've got to be kidding me. That almost hit him between the eight and the two. <laughs> Tough to put his hands up to stop it. Tough to put it in a better spot than that. You know, had Hawkins, excuse me, Timmy, on for a second field goal attempt of the day. He kicked a 47-yarder early on. This is a 27-yard attempt. Other than one he had blocked earlier in the year, he's perfect. Seven for seven. And he splits the upright. So he is perfect on the day as well. The Auburn Tigers have taking a 13 to 7 lead we're still in the first quarter but well, they got their first 10 points on turnovers and they'll tell you here quickly at Jordan Harris Stadium when Auburn scores first they're 17 and 0 so that builds a lot of confidence in itself but now they'll even get more confident because this was a good solid offensive series Nick stepped up he threw a couple of good passes he read the defense he was hitting the seam he was going where they had created some air Nick's was sharp so I think Terry bowden has got to be feeling pretty good right now Terry Bowden, of course, you know the story. Son of Bobby Bowden. And talks to him often about what he does on the football field and has obviously used a lot of his father's offensive scheme, has changed it up just a bit, uses the eye more often than not. And let's send you down to John Spagnola for a moment. One of the heroes of last year's game, of course, Andy Fuller, who dropped that pass. Yeah. It didn't matter because of the penalty. But uh, he had a career game last year, a key touchdown and seven receptions. That was half of his receptions all year. He was euphoric after the game. That came crashing down when he found out his mother, Dorothy, had breast cancer. He took a couple of days off. He was pretty distraught. We're happy to report Dorothy is doing a lot better. She's progressing well, and of course, she's here at the game today. And I'm sure Andy will make some big plays before the game's over. Terry? Terrific story, John. Right. That's great. And I'm sure very proud as she watches Andy Fuller play here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Hawkins with a little sky kick. Up to the 23. Jacques Green looks for Will. And gets up to the 27. That's a kick they used last week, and the, the fans did not like it. No, they call that the sunshine kick. And Wayne Hall was telling us, hey, we did that last week, and the fans started booing. The guy dropped the ball. We recovered a fumble and said they started cheering. Of course. That's how it works in college football. Take a look at Hawkins coming from the side and a little pooch kick or sky kick as they call it here. See for Auburn this is a good kick and I'll tell you why because they don't kick it deep anyway down to the 5 or 10 so this time they only want to kick it to the 30 they put it high gives their guys a chance to get under it cover it well and possibly force a fumble. Looks like Larry Melton may have gotten a piece of the face mask there and got away with it. First down at the 28. Wolf with a throw. Chris Doyne, the attentive receiver, and broken up by Del McGee. And that pass a little bit late in getting to Chris Doring. You know, Del McGee, he's the best cover guy they've got here. He's an experienced, confident guy. He plays this like an NFL guy. Watch this. He gets on his back, watch the contact, but he's trying to get in front to make the interception. And he's got every right to do that because when that ball's in the air, he has as much right if he's going for the football as the offensive guy. Del McGee, a senior out of Columbus, Georgia. Started all of last year, and the coaches say he is their best coverage man one-on-one. -on -one. The draw to Fred Taylor. A lot of room to the near sideline. 
and into Auburn territory at the 49 before he's driven out of bounds. Larry Melton drove him out there, but a gain of 23 for the Gators. Every time these two teams touch the ball, they can score. Uh, talking with Terry Bowden yesterday, Terry says, hey, listen, we need at least 30 points to even have a chance in this game. Look at Doran gets a good block there. But there's so much speed, so much talent here, they can break it any time. Yeah, we talked to him yesterday. He said we, we have to have at least 30 points to and have a chance. And I'm sure Steve Spurrier feels that way as well. You get up and it's raining, cats and dogs, but you know, it hasn't affected a thing. We've had the turnovers, but it hasn't affected the score to keep it down. Wolfel over the middle, complete inside the 30 to the 24-yard line. Doc has Green on the catch. Charles Rose, the free safety, made the stop. Keep rotating their receivers in and in and out of the ball game. They have to do that because they throw downfield so often. You want to keep them fresh. Now watch Warfel helps make this play by stepping up in the pocket, avoiding the rush, throws it over the middle. Now again, they're rotating receivers here, so they get a new guy in, fresh legs. They bring in Green, and he makes the catch and picks up long yardage. Green, a redshirt freshman with great speed. He's got the wheels. The first time at the 25. Fred Taylor goes down in the backfield. Marcellus Mostella was there first. His 11th tackle for loss on the year, and here's a guy who leads the team in tackles. Look how quickly he gets here, Tim. Watch Harris, 53, spikes 55. They jammed this thing up in the middle. They tried to pull their guard and get it out in front of Taylor, and they jammed it immediately, which allowed the pursuit to come in and make the tackle. Taylor was the leading rusher for Florida last year. The duo of Williams and Taylor went over 1,500 yards, but now it's Terry Jackson who starts. A loss of three, so second and 13 for Werfel. Wide open is Green. He's got a first down and more. Driven out at the 11-yard line. So two big catches for Jacques Green, who came in on this series of downs. Of course, this guy had an impact already. Watch this. Again, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're in man. They're playing at a soft man, though, and they get off the corner. And when McGee played him soft, he came up, and then you're giving these guys room to run. And if you do that, you're really having a lot of problems. But Werfel is avoiding the rush. He's stepping up. He's throwing off balance. He's got a gun for an arm. And that is a lot of first downs, folks. Auburn at almost 27 along with Florida per game. First and goal at the 10. And Danny Werfel can't communicate with his... Fellow offensive players, he wants a timeout. Talked about Auburn playing a little bit soft last year when Florida got inside the 30. Auburn blitzed three times. And Florida scored three times. <laughs> That's not a good so, percentage. So Auburn's just trying to keep it in front of them now. They're playing a little bit soft. They aren't coming as hard. And they're hoping the three down guys and maybe one linebacker can add some pressure on Warford. Yeah, they've only had a couple interceptions on the year, too. We mentioned early on that this defense this year has not created the turnovers like they did a year ago. Well, they have about two a game last year. Great point. 22 turnovers or interceptions last year. Two a game. They've only got two on the season coming into this game. So you're right. It's a different type of defense that they're playing, obviously. We look at some of the other scores from around the country and the games set to get underway. Duke and Virginia out of the ACC. Virginia with the loss last week to North Carolina. Big win for Carolina. And they are taking on Georgia Tech down the road in Atlanta today. And how about last Saturday's upsets, though? When you look up and down the line, Northwestern at Michigan. And you had Texas Tech with the win over Texas A&M, and uh, you go on and on. What a great story Northwestern has become. Uh, how about Northwestern for the Rose Bowl? What do you think? It could happen. I know it. Not sure it will, but it, it could. It's a possibility. And when's the last time you could say that this late in the year? Guys like Mike Adamley and Irv Cross, those guys are going crazy. The days of Eric Carsegian. Right. At the helm up in Evanston, Illinois. So it's first and goal at the 10. Four receivers set. But they give it straight ahead. This is Fred Taylor to the end zone. His fifth touchdown run of the year. And the Gators drive very quickly up the field. Can anybody stop either offense today, Tim? Doesn't look like it so far. No, not so far. This was an outside push by Auburn. It opened up the middle. He got a tremendous block by Mitchell and Young inside for that run. For a 10-yard touchdown run by Fred Taylor. And it is 13-13 with the extra point. 
This would be Florida's first lead of the day. Teague the holder, Edmondson up, and it is good. So for the first time on the day, the Florida Gators on top on the scoreboard, 14 to 13, with just under two minutes left in the first. Auburn was expecting pass on that first down play. They came with an outside push to keep Warfel in the pocket. It opens up the middle, and then watch this. Taylor just takes it. Great blocks there by Mitchell and Young and Green, and Taylor does the rest to get the touchdown. You see it so often this year, I think more than any other year in college football, teams spreading the field in terms of the personnel. You had three receivers to the near side, one to the far side, and then running up the gun. Terry, what that does is it spreads that defense so thin, creates air for the running game. They go from sideline to sideline. What can the defense do but cover it? I think it's the best offensive unit in the country. Solid too deep at the uh, skill positions. Huge, talented offensive line. I think the running backs could control the uh, the clock a little bit better, but I mean, as the defensive coaches will tell you, Florida, they just get Gatorade to go well, on the field so much. It is amazing. You know, you score so quickly that it makes it tough on your defense. What happens today when both teams score so quickly? I'm not sure there's an advantage either way. Six plays, 72 yards, and just under two minutes taken off the clock on that scoring drive. And Matt Teague on to kick it away again for the Gators. Back deep, Heinz Tucker and Robert Baker back deep at their own 10-yard line. And there has not been a lull in this game so far. Teague slips as he kicks this one away. They're taking it at the 20-yard line. Up to the 32, the ball's on the ground. Auburn got it back. That was McLeod carrying it back, the backup fullback, and I think he recovered his own fumble. You know, there's a smart play, though. He brings it back straight ahead, just tries to get what he can out of it because it's good coverage. You see the ball loose right there, and then he reaches out and gets his own fumble, but it's like a bar of soap. Got it back. There is a flag at the play, by the way, so we'll find out what that's about. Look at Matt watch Teague, though. Yeah, watch it. Oh. Exactly. His left foot, his plant foot, never could play. Uh -uh. That's what Spags was telling us earlier right now. He didn't have enough men on one side of the ball. The penalty was refused. That's the second, second time that's happened to Florida today they've been penalized. Both times Auburn has declined the penalties, but uh, yeah, it's been unusual at this point in the season. You see that happen twice in one quarter. Yeah, illegal procedure. Of course, the adrenaline flow here has been tremendous. It has been a happening all week long here in Auburn, Alabama. These two get together. It is always a classic matchup. It has been so the last two years with Auburn winning both of those. And this one turned into the same type game. Knicks on the run. And will be driven out of bounds at the 30-yard line, maybe inside at the 29. So he lost a couple of yards as Dexter Daniels, the linebacker, ran him out. That's very, very unusual for Nix not to throw that ball away. Normally he does. You know, Jimbo Fisher, the quarterback coach, he talks about uh, Nick's improvement and he says his greatest strength, he knows his weaknesses. Well, this is one of them. He doesn't want to take a sack. He's got to throw this thing away. But look at the pursuit coming by Florida. He can feel it, too, but he also sees that maybe I can turn the corner. It's just not quick enough to do that. Couldn't get there. James Bates on the initial pressure, and then Daniels came up to drive him out. So he loses two. Nix is changing the play. He feels a blitz coming. Florida will disguise a lot of their defenses. There goes Davis trying to get outside. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That's about it. Lawrence Wright ran him out of bounds. It's one of the tough things, you know, about reading this defense. They disguise somewhat. You'll think there's a blitz, and you make your check off at the line of scrimmage, and they step back. And it's one of the things, though, that Patrick Nix has done well. And conversely, you talked about the blitzes by Auburn last year. It's one of the things that Danny Werfel does awfully well, is read defenses. He sure does. That time, Daniels was showing blitz. Didn't come on a hard blitz, but he read the run quickly, played it up from the end, down lineman. Actually cheated up the linebacker, cheated into the down lineman. Did a nice job stringing that out. So third and ten at the 31 with just under a minute left here in the first. And they whistle it. And want to talk about it. And by the way, it has stopped raining here at Jordan Harris Stadium. Actually gotten a lot brighter. Uh -huh. Nick's from the shotgun. On the run. Looking. 
He's got a lot of room. Across the 50 to the 48 of Florida, and obviously a first down. So he couldn't get to the outside two plays ago. This time, he turns it into a gain of 20. Good coverage by Florida, but watch Nix. Feels the pressure coming now, he'll roll. Now there is not a soul open, and he knows that, so he commits earlier this time rather than stringing it out. Hits the corner, gets a great block. He's got to learn how to slide better, though. I mean, a lot just tagged him coming down. He was kind of a half slide. Took and a hit, he didn't have to. I'm going down on that play. You know, Lott is an all-conference type cornerback. Came up and knew he had a free shot at the, the quarterback and took it. Kevin McLeod now in at fullback. Even Davis, the tailback. With 20 seconds left in the first, Davis cuts back and pulls ahead for a gain of about three. To the 46-yard line, Ed Chester, the defensive tackle, made the stop as the final seconds of the first quarter tick away here in Auburn, Alabama. What a first quarter it has been. Plenty of action in the Gators leading 14 to 13 here at Jordan Harris Stadium. We'll be back. The rain has cleared, turning into a pretty nice day here in Auburn, Alabama. A heck of a football game going on. 14 to 13, Florida leads it. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, John Spagnola with the Auburn Tigers taking over at the Florida 47 yard line. Second and eight after the gain of two. Here goes Patrick Nix. A lot of time and incomplete through a bullet right over the middle intended for Robert Baker and too hot to handle. And this is how we got here. Tim, everything really even except for one category, and that's turnover. Well, those two turnovers, too, have led to 10 points for Auburn. But if you look at the rest of it, other than a little discrepancy in the time of possession, almost everything is just perfectly even, including the score. But that's not a, that's a same story we've had the last couple of years between these two teams. I mean, the two wins in a row over Florida by Auburn. They had nine takeaways in those games, and then two here today, which led to 10 points. Third and eight, and Nick's out of the shotgun again. Old Morrow in there now in fullback, along with McLeod. A lot of time. Tyrone Goodson at the 35, complete for the first down. Mike Harris on the coverage, a gain of 13, and let's check in with John Saunders for an update from New York. John? Terry, the freshman Autry Denson filling in for Randy Kinder doing a pretty good job. This is second touchdown of the day, and he goes in standing up. 21-7 now, the Irish in front. Terry. All right, John, thank you. And the Irish with another touchdown up at the Meadowlands. You know, Terry, Auburn lost two receivers from last year's starting lineup. They lost uh, Stanley and and or Sanders rather and Bailey. Those two had 99 receptions between them, and they need these other young receivers to step up now. Nix up the near sideline. He's got Gaucher, and he can't find it. Threw it to the outside, and Gaucher could not make the adjustment and make the catch. Fred Weary was step for step with Willie Gaucher. Here's Gaucher. He's working against 24 Weary. He has to readjust on this ball. It's thrown over the wrong shoulder. That's Nick's problem. If he leads him to the inside. He's got a shot, not only at the catch, but at a touchdown. John Spagnola, what do you have? Well, Tyrone Goodson and Willie Gaucher have played real well here, stepping in for Sanders and Bailey, as you said. And Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, has got a nickname for him. He calls Willie Gaucher Bones, and he calls <laughs> Tyrone Goodson Stick. They got Stick and Bones. These guys got to put some weight on, fellas. Yeah. No, they've never called my partners that. I can close it. <laughs> Out to Harold Morrow, and the ball is loose, and it goes right into the hands of an Auburn Tiger. And it ends up at the original line of scrimmage. Hicks Poor, the junior out of Marietta, Georgia, the man who eventually wound up with the football. That could be his biggest catch of the year right there because he saved the turnover for Auburn, which really hadn't turned the ball over against uh, Florida at all in the last three meetings. Boy, he did one there. That's a, watch this. Watch how heads up this is. All right, here comes the ball, and this thing gets knocked out loose right away. Now, here's Hicks on the ground, looks up and says, whoop. <laughs> Hicks poor. Look what I found. There's another young junior. He's only 168 pounds. These guys are not big. Now, walk on last year. You know, Spags makes a good point. The receivers are starting to come on a little bit now, but early on, they didn't adjust, and it took away from Davis the running game because they could load up for him. Third and 10, Hicks to the air. Goes Shea with a diving catch at the 23, and a first down. He knew where the marker was. He got there, and he made a heck of a catch. Gain of 12, and they'll move the chain. Terry, this is what we're talking about. Goucher has learned to get some separation. He's working against Weary. Now watch this. He'll push off and cut to the outside. The ball's waiting for him when he gets there. Goucher had five receptions last week. He's got two here already this afternoon. 
So he is starting to come on. And if they can get the defense to respect the pass and those wideouts, it'll open things up for the running game in Davis. Mm -hmm. So first and 10 at the 23 and now out of the eye. Beasley and Morrow. It's Fred Beasley bouncing off the tacklers to the 21. Johnny Church, the defensive end, made the stop there. Well, Beasley, a four-yard gain. Take a look at the last play. We'll see with a close look whether he did make the catch. The ball looked like it may have hit the turf a little bit. Yeah, you got to give it to him, right? No, absolutely. I think he's got the ball right here, and he pulls it in. Now, the ground can't cause a fumble. He's our... Well, I don't know. Now, look well, at that that's angle. That's a different angle. <laughs> I still think his hands are on the top of the football. You do, huh? It's a good call. All right, we'll go with that. Second and eight, here comes the blitz. Nix reads it, complete to Hicks, pull. Looking for the end zone, he finds it. It's a touchdown, Auburn. The Florida Gators brought the blitz, and Patrick Nix scrambled out of trouble and hit Hicks four on a 12-yard catch and the touchdown. First of all, Nix rolled behind the tackle. Now watch this. It's a hitch pattern, a little hook, and the defender falls down. Oh, man, Lott, Lott couldn't keep his footing. He went down and poor with two great catches on that one drive. The one that was a fumble that he caught and that one. 21-yard reception for the TD for Hicks poor actually. And Extra point is up and it is good. So we have gone back and forth in this one. The lead has changed hands many times already. And right now the Tigers lead it by six. American Shannon Miller goes for an unprecedented third straight all-around title at the World Gymnastics Championships. Sunday on a special edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Now the receivers for the Auburn Tigers enjoying the last touchdown. Nick's poor, a second touchdown catch of the year, a former walk-on, and uh, the Tigers lead it 20 to 14. Two lead changes already in this one, and uh, many more to come, I'm sure. Another sky kick by Hawking. Green at his own 25, and he won't get there. May have lost a yard or two on the return. Spikes was in on the tackle. Along with a couple of other Auburn Tigers. And coming up next, there's your lineup. The second half of our college football doubleheader. Oklahoma and Texas, the longtime rivalry. Ohio State undefeated battles Wisconsin. That'll be a tough test for the Buckeyes. Washington State against USC. So check your local listings for the game in your area. And call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. That's next here on ABC. 11 plays, 69 yards. It doesn't take long. And poor with the uh, reception. Who made that catch? That poor receiver. That's right. Straight ahead, Elijah Williams with room. Can't break the tackle at the 32-yard run by Martavius Houston. And if he did, he had a lot of green in front of him. But a good gain of about eight, maybe nine yards on first down. Martavius Houston, the freshman out of Waterdale Lakes, Florida. You know, he's a great story. Terry Bowden is, of course, the son of uh, Bobby Bowden, the legendary Bobby Bowden. They were recruiting, and Bobby was coming out of his house when Terry came in to recruit him. Bobby says, hey, if you can pitch that guy, I'll circle back. I'll be back here a little bit later. Jerome Evans and Elijah Williams. And in the backfield, here goes Williams. Wrapped up right at the line, falls ahead for maybe a yard after the initial contact, but he's going to lose a yard. Mastella in there along with Derek Robinson, the backup defensive tackle. Robinson, a sophomore out of Denham Springs, Louisiana. We've talked about this defensive front temp. It is very young. Robinson only a sophomore, but you've got Shannon Suttle a sophomore. Jimmy Brumbaugh, a starter, who's a freshman. Mark Smith, a junior, he is the experienced man. Defensive coordinator Wayne Hall is doing a good job, though. He's giving Florida a lot of different looks. Warfield's having a tough time picking things up. He's only 3 for 11 right now. Third and three is very loud near. Over the middle, complete to Elijah Williams, and he's got a first down up to the 42-yard line. Anthony Harris on the stop. Now, Harris is the defensive linebacker that has to take the back out of the backfield. He got caught. He leaned to the right side. The ball came instead of going outside, came in the middle. That was the step that they needed for the catch, and Harris was just playing catch-up. Uh, it's one of the things Steve Spurrier does so well in his offense, uh, among the many things. One of the best minds, if not the best offensive mind in college football, but he throws to the backs often, and that makes it awfully tough 
with the, the number of receivers, the quality receivers that he has over here. Wilfell on first down. Looking up top to Doring, and it's through his hands. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Doring's complaining that he was interfered with. They went after Larry Melton again, the sophomore cornerback. That was a pass that could have been caught. Yeah, he's saying he was held before that. Yeah, there's a great story, though. Number 28, Chris Doring. He's a former walk-on. You know, he should have caught that ball, whether he was interfered with or yep. not. I don't think he really was. The hands were on him afterwards. That ball's got to be caught, and then there was contact afterwards. I think Chris was just a little bit frustrated, and that's why he was calling for the interference call. He's had a great career at Florida, though. He's also a former walk-on. Wilfel, Mike Hilliard at the 47-yard line. Martavius Houston on the coverage in the head. There's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. We've had our share of those today as well. Holding. Steve Spurrier, who has led the Gators to their finest five-year period in their football history. There's no question about that. An old friend. Steve holding Spurrier. on the offense, the 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Steve Spurrier's won 54 of his 66 games of Florida. He's an innovative offensive mind, one of the most potent offenses in football. Often misunderstood. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He speaks off the cuff. He's candid. People oftentimes misunderstand that. Played in three straight SEC championship games. Warfel on second and 24. Rudell Anthony. Driven out at the 44 yard line. So we'll bring up third and just about nine yards. Have to get to the 48 yard line of Auburn with a first down. There's Laurent Thomas. Bring Anthony out. Riddell Anthony's got to be careful here that he doesn't get a penalty. Watch him throw the ball in Thomas's face here at the end. Boom, right there. See, emotion sometimes gets in the way of concentration. And right now, Florida can't afford any penalties. He's got to maintain his composure. Now, Anthony feeling that Thomas ran him out of bounds a little bit too hard and a little bit too long. But it's third and eight at the 44-yard line. A lot of room. Complete the going and a first down. So a lot of time for Werfel, and he finds Chris Doring over the middle. Doring, a man who has been so good the last couple of years, and a guy they go to in big situations. Watch him here get the separation off Melton. Boom, across the middle, they're in a zone. He reads that and just goes to the hook area. That is tough to stop, and I'll tell you why. Florida went to four wideouts and also put their lone back into a pass pattern. So he had five receivers out there, and when you're in a zone, that's tough to defend and take away all the seams. First down at the 42, and Fred Taylor, the yeah. only back in the backfield. Here it is again. Just going to the near side, and they give it to Taylor. Bounces out. Inside the 35 to the 34, it looked much like the last touchdown that Florida scored in terms of spreading the field and going right up the middle. You know, you on your screen, just a moment, I want to point out some of the bulbs are out on the scoreboard here at Jordan Harris Stadium. So that is a nine and now 858 and counting at this point. I was going to say that you picked it up. It was the same formation, four wides and one back. Instead of sending him out on the pass route, they ran him that last time. So they're trying to spread the defense thin and keep them on their heels and their heads on a the swivel. They go to it again. Now Warfel changes the play. And he goes down at the 40-yard line. Shannon Settle was there with the sack. And you may call that a coverage sack because he had some time initially, but good coverage in the secondary for the Tigers. Boy, defensive coordinator Wayne Hall is starting to gamble a little bit. That looked like a combination defense. They had man to one side, zone to the back side. Came with a whole lot of pressure to get at work for. Well, loss of six on the sack to me and take a look well when you've got man coverage you can come with the blitz but that doesn't even need a blitz that time that was just subtle who beat the blocker and came hard and got the sack Steve Spurrier wants to talk about it third down and eight after the loss of six on the sack and the ball resting on the 40 yard line
take you back to 1966, Auburn, Florida, down in the swamp, and a man named Steve Spurrier comes in fourth and 14. The game tied at 27 and a 40-yard field goal to win it all. The three-point win for the Florida Gators and maybe the game that solidified the Heisman Trophy for Steve Spurrier. The ballots had already gone out, and he ran past and kicked his way to the Heisman Trophy that day. Strong arm, strong leg, and I mean, he is one intense, competitive guy. Look at him. He's in agony over there. I want the over and under on how many times the visor goes to the ground today. It's already been there quite a bit. Third down and eight at the 40. Warfel the throw. Complete inside the 30 of first down. Jock has Green with a big game. There goes the football. And the Tigers appear to have it. They do. I believe it was Laurent Thomas who came up with the ball. And it turned a big gain in a first down into another turnover. And this is what has done the Florida Gators in the last two years against the Auburn Tigers. It is uncanny how this has happened in this game, how Auburn continues to turn the ball loose. Watch this now. He's got to protect this thing. Here comes Green. Boom. Backside. Never saw it coming. Ball's loose. And look at all the blue shirts. One, two, three, four, five, six blue shirts. One orange pants. That's it. Got them outnumbered. They fly around to the football after they turn it loose. Now it's Scott Stacy who knocked that football loose. Patrick Nix to throw. Going deep. And incomplete. Almost picked off. Almost gave it right back, didn't he? Yeah, Robert Baker was the intended receiver. That ball was almost picked off by Anton Lott. He had it right in his hand. Lott, number nine, just playing it like a center fielder. He doesn't even have to play hard. He's playing soft back there, just waiting. Boy, that's an easy pickings for a guy like that. I don't know how he didn't get it. Three-year starter, most experienced defensive back. Yeah, he's an all-conference, all-conference type guy. 5'9", 183. She said a junior. Well, second and ten now for Knicks. And he operates from the gun. A lot of movement up there, and they blow it dead. They've had a number of penalties on the day. Look like maybe Victor Riley may have moved. We have a dead ball. Illegal procedure, false start on the offense. The five-yard penalty, second down. Now, there's a new rule this year. If the defensive guy gets in the neutral zone and forces that motion or that movement, it'll be called on the defense. Now, the Florida did move first, but they didn't get into the neutral zone. Mm -hmm. So Riley is tagged. He gets the flag, and they move Auburn back. Now, Victor Riley not starting these days. Kevin Cummings, the tight tackle. They flipped their tackles and guards back and forth. But... Uh, Coaching staff a little bit upset at the practice work habits of Victor Riley. He was a big-time freshman last year. Over the middle, Harold Morrow with the catch up to the 31-yard line. Then Hanks on the coverage and the stop. Where Riley almost allowed Knicks to get killed that time. We were just talking about him. And don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars in scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. And also coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action. Plus, Harry Carson reports on how Stanford's Tyrone Willingham, one of only six black head coaches in Division 1A, whipped the Cardinal into shape to have a great year this year. Coming up on the Peninsula Halftime Report. The draw to Stephen Davis trying to get outside and a gain of about four. He's going to come up, I believe, just short of the first down, maybe a yard or two. It's a good call by Terry Bowden, though. It's a definite passing situation. It was third and long. Florida was expecting pass, so they went to four wideouts and just ran a little quick draw. Stephen Davis with over 2,200 yards came into this game with 2,222 yards in his career and seventh on the all-time rushing list here at Auburn. And it looks like he may be limping just a bit. Well, Hawkins on the punt on fourth and two, a low snap, but he gets it away. And a low kick. Here's Riedel Anthony. The spin. And up to the 31-yard line. So a pretty good little return from Riedel Anthony. They picked up that ball on the low kick, a 46-yard punt. 
An 11-yard return, and the Gators start on their own 36-yard line. One of the great traditions here at Auburn, the War Eagle, and that is his arrival earlier in the day. It's War Eagle 6, and they carry him like you would a little baby into the stadium. Of course, there he is right now, perched along the sideline. What a great-looking bird, of course, named after Chief War Eagle that came through here in the late 1800s. Chief War Eagle is an Indian on his way out to Oklahoma. Hmm. Beautiful bird. First to 10 at the 31, Werfel complete out to Anthony, and he may have a first down. He does, across the 40 to the 42. So Danny Werfel starting to heat up. He started the game one for nine, and now he is eight out of 17, and he has passed his coach, Steve Spurrier, in all-time completions with 394 now. You know, that is phenomenal. He had 53 touchdowns in the last two and a half years. Incredible, 13 this year. Don't forget, he shared time with Terry Dean. We were joking earlier that Steve would take him out before he passed. Well, that, that did not happen. Did, he needs him in there, I guess, a little bit too much. First and 10 at the 43. Werfel again to throw. Out of the backfield is Williams at the sideline. Trying to stay in bounds, he does. And gets to the end zone. Actually, they have blown it dead. He stepped out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Boy, what a pass from Warfel, and now Steve Spurrier arguing about that. He doesn't believe he stepped out. You think he's not intense? Watch this. You'll get a look at it and see. Here comes Mostella, 47, chasing him down from the backside. See if he stepped on it. Well, it's tough to tell from this angle, but I mean, he is tightrope walking. You can't get any closer to it, and the official's right behind him, too, although he could be blocked out by Marstella. Well, I tell you, we see no sign there of any official blowing you dead and saying that Williams was out of bounds. Danny Werfel now has completed eight of his last nine passes. Over the middle to the end zone and through the arms of Riedel Anthony. Boy, that ball was perfectly thrown. Perfectly thrown. Anthony had to go right, right through his arms. I mean, that's the fourth or fifth pass we've seen today dropped by a Florida receiver. You know, you do all this work to get free. Look at him. He's separated from the defensive back. Now watch this. The ball comes right in between his arms. That's a touchdown. And when Steve Spurrier sees that in the films, I guarantee you he's going to go crazy on, on Riddell, who makes great plays, but also he misses a couple like he did there. That, that's got to be caught, especially in a game like this. Anthony had the 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, but that should have been a TD there. Andy Werfel, Corolla Palma. Inside the 20 to the 18 yard line, Del McGee on the coverage and the stop. And what pressure this offense puts on a defense, Tim? It really does. They spread you from sideline to sideline. What Auburn did that time is they went to a two deep zone and put five guys underneath, five linebackers to cover. So you've got man coverage underneath and you've got two guys deep to help out. But still, you isolate one on one on the sideline over here and, you know, it's an easy first down. Ball resting on the 18-yard line. It's third down and just about a yard. Williams tries to get outside. He does. And knocked out of bounds inside the 10 down to the 6-yard line. Larry Melton knocked him out. But Elijah Williams, the sophomore out of Milton, Florida. There's some big plays on this drive. So you don't want to pin yourself back like this. Auburn has let them have this drive now. Get down inside the 20. Florida is so effective in the red zone. They will spread you, they'll run you, they'll pass you. They keep you on your heels. They have one of the highest percentages in the red zone of any team in the country. 25 out of 30 coming into this game. But first and goal at the six, 420 remaining here in the first half. Williams leaping, and the ball was loose for a moment. He gets down near the goal lines. That thing popped out and he came right back down to Elijah. I think the official was on it quickly, though. The umpire came running up and said the ground caused that. It's not a loose ball. He's down at the one, inside the one. See, this we're talking about. Again, they spread you. Then they run up the middle. They get some good blocking. Again, it's Mitchell, Young, and Green opening that thing. Now, see if the ground causes this. Yep. Boom. See, no question about it. The official's all over it and says, put that ball down. It's Florida. Second and goal at the one. Dwayne Mobley, Elijah Williams in the backfield. They operate out of the eye. 
It's going to be Williams fighting to get there and a touchdown for the Gators. Elijah Williams with the one yard run. And Danny Werfel has certainly heated up in this drive. He went to Williams for the big gain and Williams now who had stepped out of bounds in a controversial call scores the touchdown. Watch the blocking on the left side 74 Odom. He's an All-American Green 78 Mitchell 71. I mean they just clean out the blue jerseys and open that thing up for anybody to run through. Well that's 298 pounds of Odom 300 pounds of Green and Mitchell's 290. Bart Edmondson on for the extra point once again. And it is good. So with 332 left here in the first half. It is Florida with a one-point lead, 21 to 20. And guess what? There's some sunshine above Jordan Harris Stadium now. Guys from the Sunshine State take the lead and the sun comes out. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, an hour of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by a brand new episode of Lois and Clark. Then Billy Crystal is not at home on the range. Oscar winner Jack Blanche co-stars in City Slickers on the Sunday night movie, all tomorrow here on ABC. A lot of Gator fans made their way here to Auburn, Alabama. You look at their scoring drive. Seven plays, 69 yards, 219 off the clock. Terry Bowden told us he thought it would take at least 30 points to have a chance to win this game. That may have been conservative. Well, he, he meant in the first half. 21-20, and we still have plenty of time left in the first half. Well over 85,000 here at Jordan-Hare today. It holds just over that, but uh, they'll pack about 90,000 in here when you think about all the extra media attention that this game gets and uh, all the other folks who make their way somehow into the stadium. They have been classics over the last two years, and this one turning into the same. Matt Teague with the kickoff. Baker back deep, watching it sail out of the end zone. They'll bring it back out to the 20 for the Auburn Tigers to start there. Well, the other action going on today, Notre Dame with the 21-7 lead. That's at the Meadowlands. Last week, the Irish with the win at Washington, of course. ACC, Duke and Virginia underway early on in Penn State with a tough test at Purdue. A good ball game. Cavaliers of Virginia and Penn State both reeling after losses that they didn't expect. So first down at the 20 for Patrick Nix in the Auburn offense. Dangerous pass, and Mark Wright has picked it off at the 22. An ill-advised pass from Patrick Nix. And Wright with the interception. The last thing that Terry Bowden needed with three and a half and under left in this first half. You know, Terry told us yesterday, this guy just does not make mistakes. He doesn't throw many interceptions. This ball is not thrown with authority. He throws it into coverage. And there's Wright, who's the strong safeties playing underneath, almost like a linebacker. There was no way to get that pass in there. Just a poor decision by Nix. So turnovers playing a big role in this game as well as they have done the last two years. But all right, now they're really hurting the Auburn Tigers. Oh, no question. You shorten the field like this and give this kind of field position to Florida. And for Florida, as I always say, it's like running downhill. Three receivers to the near side. Over the middle of Fred Taylor incomplete. Werfel went down under pressure. That was Anthony Harris, the linebacker, who came in to dump Danny. Just can't get on Nick's too badly for that interception. I mean, that is the first turnover in three years in this ball game. I mean, that's not pretty bad. good ratio. Yeah. yeah. Look at the Florida turnovers today. Three of them. The first two led to the first ten points on the board for Auburn. And of course, the story the last couple of years. Look at those scores last year game at six lead changes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and the six turnovers certainly a big part of that. Second and ten, maybe a free play. Danny Whipple to the end zone, complete, and a touchdown. There is a flag down, and I believe this will be against Auburn being offsides. Let's wait. Hold on. Mike Hilliard with the catch, and Steve Spurrier and everyone else awaits the call. I thought Auburn jumped. Offsides. You're exactly right. On the defense, refused. Yeah. So how quick was that? Huh? They get the turnover and uh, you go right to Ike Hilliard for the touchdown. You get Florida that kind of field position. You know, we say it's like running downhill when you make the field that short for him. 
Watch this. He knows he's got a free play. Just gets good protection. Steps up. Boy, the coverage is poor as well. 22-yard catch by Hilliard from Danny Werfel. And all of a sudden, Danny Werfel on fire. He's been on again for the extra point. And it looks like it just took place. I think it did. It's very been good at 28-20, Tim. For the first time this afternoon, the crowd here has not gone silent, but it is not like it was before. I mean, they are much, much quieter now. We've got just over three minutes left here in the first half, and maybe the reason the crowd hasn't gone silent, the uh, number of Florida fans here. But, uh, maybe the Auburn side has certainly gone quiet. Well, Georgia Tech with the halftime lead over North Carolina in Atlanta. Georgia Tech thinking maybe with the win today, and they still keep their bowl picture alive. After they really struggled early on. Syracuse with the lead over Eastern Michigan. Georgia is doing to Vanderbilt. Obviously, this game has big implications, not only in the SEC. You've got number one in the West against number one in the East, but nationally. The Gators at number three, Auburn at number seven, and Auburn with a loss already to LSU. And they'll afford this loss. The Gators, on the other hand, you know, if they lose here, they still have a chance to play in that SEC championship game and an outside chance to win a national championship, although with one loss. It's tough at that point. Baker in his own two-yard line. Got room, but there's a flag down. Out to the 37-yard line. Good return for Robert Baker, the freshman out of Gainesville, Florida. But there is a flag down at the 20-yard line. It's going to go against Auburn, too. I believe they're going to call block in the back. Matt Teague, the... Kicker actually made the stop, but this is going to come back one way or another. We have an illegal block in the back by the return team. The distance will be half the distance goal line. First down. That is so hard to avoid on the kicking team because the guy folds down on you. Watch the left corner of your screen. Bam, right there. That is so hard to avoid. Daryl Reagans, number one, just hit him in the back trying to help out the ball carrier. The guy folds down on him. He's got his back to him. Couldn't get his head in front and pushed him. So the turnover a moment ago, and now the mistake on the return. And Auburn is backed up at their own six-yard line. For the Auburn Tigers, Timmy, you've got just under three minutes left in the first half. How important for them to make a drive, put something on the board here? I think mentally it's critical, and also in the game with teams that can score this quickly, it's also critical. I'm surprised we were looking at the coaches there. They were yelling. I thought they were yelling at uh, Jonathan Sledge. And then if you look at the replay, it was Daryl Riggins who had, actually had the block in the back. And Fred Beasley went straight ahead for two yards, so it brings up second down and eight. And right down the Auburn sideline, a little bit quiet. That's Long Jonathan just, Sledge. He just took the wrath of the coach. I would be silent, too, I guess, at this point. The crowd is as well, though. And it's an eight-point game, Florida up. Davis tries the right side, falls ahead to the 11-yard line. So not much going on there. James Bates, the inside linebacker, made the stop. So two minutes and ten and counting now in the first half. Again, this is, Terry Bowden has said it, this is the most important game that they will have played and will play because they can ill afford to lose this and what a great rivalry it has become as well. players all week long have not downplayed how important this game is. Davis on the sweep. Gain of two up to the 13, but well short of the first down. Dexter Daniels on the stop. If I'm Florida, I'm taking a timeout now. You still have 40 seconds left on the clock. You're going to get great field position here with time left. Yeah, you got a minute 40, as a matter of fact, right now. I'd still take a timeout here. you got plenty of time to get good field position, and now Steve takes the timeout. They've got the ball at the 13 right now. Brings up a fourth and three. And a minute 40 left in the first half. Steve Spurrier trying to get more points on the board before they head to the locker room. Absolutely. Knows he's going to get great field position here. Wants to stop that clock. He'll get it back here. He wants to see. He's thinking ahead. He wants to get at least a field goal and hopefully a touchdown and get some spread in this, this thing right now. 
Now Terry Bowden's record here at Jordan Hare 16 0 and 1 the tie to Georgia last year but he's never lost a game here. Trying to avoid that today. They've got to get some light bulbs out here. If you look at the scoreboard to the left it looks like 40 seconds and then if you look if you look to the scoreboard to the right like 14. it says yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll keep you posted on that. What a great athletic facility they have here at Auburn, though. And one of my favorite athletic directors in the country, David Housen. Very good to us all week long. Look at that catfish the other day. You missed that, Tim. I know you'd eat my share. Yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. Hawkins gets it away this time. High punt. This is a great punt. Going to drive Anthony back to his own 33. To the 45 yard line. A 53 yard punt by Matt Hawkins. And you talk about a big time punt when you're backed up in your own end zone just outside of it trying to get that punt off and you kick it 53 yards. So a minute 26 left in the first half. You got Florida with the eight point lead. And Werfel has been awfully good on the last two series. Florida with no timeouts remaining at the Saldo. Fred Taylor the long back. He got trips to the far side. Warfel. A lot of time to Taylor out of the backfield. Gets away from one and up to the 36 yard line. So they move the chains. The clock stops momentarily. A gain of 19. This is the field position that uh, Steve Spurrier was looking for. One play and he's already into Auburn territory at the 36 yard line. What if he misread the clock on the scoreboard as well? Oh, the minute 40, you had a lot of time. And you may have. Oh, Wolf was like a curator of clocks, too. Watch how well he works his clock. Looking for Hilliard. And good coverage from Del McGee. Not only was step for step with Ike Hilliard, but used the body a little bit to make sure that Hilliard couldn't get back in play. Boy, you talk about a lot of bumping and grinding on this, this pattern. Watch this. Here comes McGee and Hilliard. Now watch this. Here's the contact once. Boom. <laughs> Knocks him off his route. Hilliard comes back and says, hey, wait a minute. What about the, the bumping and grinding going on here? The official says, hey, it's good contact. He's looking back. Dell says incidental contact all the way. Second down and 10 at the 36 now. But Taylor again, the long setback. Here goes Danny Wolfe. A lot of time again. Looking for Rito Anthony. Incomplete again the coverage by Del McGee and good coverage again from McGee. That coverage coverage was great. McGee is the field corner. They try to play him to the wide side of the field. He's the best cover guy. He's very, very confident. You saw his speed. He actually became the offensive guy on that play. Ran to the ball and left Anthony. Just said, I'll see you and I'm going to the ball. Yeah, it's a little curious that they test McGee because he is the best cover guy in this secondary. And you've got a couple of youngsters over on the other side. Octavius Houston only a freshman, Larry Melton only a sophomore. It's a huge third down play here. Same set for Florida. This time Chris Doring to the near side, the lone receiver. Low four, a lot of time. To Fred Taylor. Inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. So a first down for the Gators as Werfel goes to his back. Fred Taylor out of the backfield. Number one, Werfel had plenty of time. Mo Collins with a tremendous saving block when the pressure came backside. Number two, Werfel never came off his receivers, went through the progression, finally saw the open man on the backside and hit him. That is well designed, well executed by Florida. Gain of 24, but the key to your right was the time he had because he was able to go through all of the other options and then hit his back. First down at the 11. Werfel to Doring to the end zone. How easy is that? What the Gators have done in the last eight minutes or so has been incredible. Well, they score the touchdown on the drive down the field. Werfel doing most of the work in the air. They get the turnover, go right to the end zone with the touchdown for Hilliard. And now, after calling the timeout and stopping the Auburn offense, they go right down the field, go to Chris Doring for another touchdown. Keep in mind, Doring 6-4. Larry Melton, the defensive back, was only 5'10 and a half. They were going to put it high if there was coverage, but he didn't even have to worry about it. Beat him to the inside, just lay it out there and let him score. Edmonds on again is getting a lot of work today. And the extra point good once again. 
So Chris Dorn on the sideline, a job well done, and Florida has taken a 15-point lead with only 29 seconds left here in the first half. And again, they line up with three receivers to the far side and only Doring to the near side. Doring, he was the intended receiver right from the get-go. This was a mismatch that they designed. They got it. They want He's 6'4". Melton is 5'10 and a half. They were going to him no matter what. But look, beat him on the break. Didn't even have to put it too high for him. Just let him to the inside to the end zone. It's almost impossible to cover. You yeah, know how Larry Melton's trying to cover that one-on-one. -on -one. It's almost impossible to do that. Look at what they've done on the year, the Florida offense in the red zone. And John Spagnola has something from the sideline. John? Uh, two things I noticed. Uh, uh, Wayne Hall had a blitz called there. He said every time he blitzed last year, they burned him for a touchdown. They get burned here on the blitz. And also the mismatch between the Florida backs and the Auburn linebackers, Marcellus Mostella and Anthony Harris against Fred Taylor and Elijah Williams. And those guys have caught some key passes in the last two drives. Terry? And you spread the field like that and all the quality receivers you have, and then you throw in the Fred Taylors, Elijah Williams out of the backfield. Tim, that's, that's, that is an offense that uh, is not going to be slowed down much by anyone. Now, we showed you the problem that Harris was having taking the backs out of the backfield earlier in the game. And you spread the field like that and all the quality receivers you have, and then you throw in the Fred Taylors, Elijah Williams out of the backfield. Tim, that's... That, that is an offense that uh, is not going to be slowed down much by anyone. Now, we showed you the problem that Harris was having taking the backs out of the backfield earlier in the game. Albert Baker looking for room and is nailed at the 23-yard line. What a hit. Mike Peterson. This game will be memorable for Mike Peterson the rest of his life because of that hit right there. This guy's just a freshman. How do you do? Welcome to the Auburn-Florida game. Watch 29. Tuck the tail, scout the eyes, drive him to the ground, and pancake him. Boom! Well, one of those you dream about. Oh, that'll rattle the fillings and put his eyeballs in his head. <laughs> exactly. That's what you call a slobber knocker. <laughs> Keep him rolling. Wow, what a hit. 22 seconds left here in the first half, and here comes Stephen Davis. Up to the 35 yard line. And the clock continues to tick. They're now. The timeout is called. So they stopped the clock with 12 seconds left here in the first half. And Terry Bowden looking to get to the locker room to regroup. Steve Spurrier obviously happy with especially the second quarter. Struggled early on with the two turnovers. And the clock running out. Here in the first half, and Auburn will not get another play from scrimmage here at Jordan Hare. So the Florida Gators with a 35 to 20 lead here at halftime. Don't forget the Prudential halftime report coming up with John Saunders in a moment. CFA College Football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And McDonald's, have you had your break today? Florida just erupted at the end. And Matt Teague gets us underway here in the second half. Robert Baker watches it go out of the end zone, so Auburn will start at its own 20-yard line. And you look at what they have to do, Tim. What does Auburn have to do, especially defensively in the second half? Number one, not panic. Do what they, they came in the game to do. Obviously, they're having trouble stopping the pass. To stop the pass, they've got to, number one, get pressure on the quarterback. They haven't been able to get to Warfel all day. That's allowing the plenty of time to read his guys and go through the progression. And anybody can hit a guy if you have that much time, which they had in that first half. So it's possessions in the first half. Florida and it was on the Florida 32. Auburn at that first one got a field goal, and then a field goal in their third possession, touchdown in their fourth. But the uh, problem really wasn't offensively. It was defensively stopping the Gators. And here's Steven Davis, his first carry of the second half. Across the 20 to the 22-yard line, a gain of two. And let's check in with John Spagnola on the field. Well, Terry, I had a chance to talk with Terry Bowden. He said those last two series offensively, just what Tim Brandt said, they really killed us. The interception, then they did not convert a first down. So Florida got the ball again. Steve Spurrier, on the other hand, is very pleased with the developments in the second quarter. And he just told his guys at halftime, keep playing the way you're playing right now. We'll come out with a victory here today. Terry? All right, John, and we have talked to Terry Bowden. He said yesterday we're going to need at least 30 points to win this game. And again, I don't think he meant the first half, but he needed 36 to be leading at halftime. What an offense on the field for Florida. 
Second and eight, Nick's the throw. Going up top for Steven Davis, and it's intercepted. And down at the 49-yard line of the Florida Gators, James Bates on the interception. And the last thing that the Tigers needed here. And Timmy, they tried to go to Davis out of the backfield and isolate him with the linebacker. You know what's ironic here? Davis couldn't be a receiver. He had gone out of bounds. He can't come back in and make that catch. The only receiver that was left was the defensive guy, Bates. He made the interception. He always kept his inside out. He used the sideline to keep Davis bracketed on that sideline, and he made the interception. And again, here's Auburn doesn't turn the ball over the last two years against Florida. They've turned it over a lot here in the last couple of minutes. Elijah Williams, the lone tailback in there. Here he comes. Across the 50 and down to the 46-yard line. Gain of about Elijah six Williams on the first down. To be Brumbaugh. The nose tackle made the stop. First half possessions for the Florida Gators, and especially the last three. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And really, you look back before the fumble then, and uh, another touchdown there. Those came off of the turnovers, two of the turnovers. And uh, this is a, an offense that has not been stopped all year long, and that certainly has carried through to today. Fumble, interception, missed field goal, and a punt. First four possessions. But this offense is so explosive, they know they never have to panic. They can get points in a hurry. Second down and seven. Elijah Williams with a big hole straight ahead, pulls his way inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. The trio of Williams, Taylor, and Jackson doing a lot of work today for the Gators. This is not a man who loses many games when he has the lead at halftime. 49-2-1 in his reign at Florida. And you know why? Because this guy is such a great game strategist. This guy adjusts on the run. Right now, Auburn knows it didn't stop the pass in the first half. They gear up for the pass. What does he do? He comes back with the run inside. Spreads him across the field, and then he ran. Ball wrestling the 38. Fred Taylor now in at tailback. Warful to the air, looking for Chris Dorn. What a catch. He heads to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. How about that? Dorn was one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback, Larry Melton. And Werfel hit him perfectly for a 38-yard pass that ends up in a touchdown. And can these guys strike quickly or what? Well, you're seeing Spurrier at his best. Sets him up with a run, comes back with a pass. This ball's perfectly thrown. They turn Melton around 28. Doring adjusts on the ball and makes the touchdown catch. This is on the verge now of being a blowout. Terry Bowden's got to get his guys together and get them back in this ball game. But Steve Spurrier's just going to run away with this thing. 41 points on the board, the after, point after attempt from Edmiston, straight through the uprights, and wow, the Florida Gators on top by 22. Just started away here in the second half. Busy man, Danny Werfel, especially from the second quarter on, he has been near perfect and uh, he's put the Gators out on top by 22 now. But Auburn on the year, look what they've done. They've outscored their opposition 59 to 7 in the third quarter. That's coming into this game, so they already are down seven here in the third. Yeah, they're going to have to get it going in a hurry because it only took over two minutes for Florida to get on the board again, down by three touchdowns now. At the 20 yard line, they back out across the 30 to the 34 yard line. Kevin McLeod, the backup fullback on the return. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. And Siemens, the leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens precision thinking. 12.46 left here in the third quarter. And uh, we talked about the two quarterbacks, two of the best in the country, especially, or at least in the SEC, but two of the top ten in the country in terms of pass efficiency. Patrick Nix looking to get something going here in the second half. And here's Stephen Davis trying to get to the outside. He does. A big gain on first down, and now with a 46-yard line of Florida. Boy, that's a good call by Terry Bowden, Tommy Bowden. Both those guys now working, trying to get this thing going. Nix's last two passes were intercepted. This time they come back with their running back, who's a quality running back, big-time guy. This is one of his longest runs of the year. Now, last week he had six runs over 10 yards apiece, 162 yards. He's had a tough time getting it going today, but he's one of the best running backs in the country. The NFL scouts love him. He's got a combination of size, speed, and strength, and they've got to get him going to take some of the pressure off their quarterback, Nix. Got 60 yards on the day, Tim, after that gain of 19. Straight ahead. 
is Davis, a gain of about two. On first down, David Barnard, the defensive tackle out of Miami, made the hit. This is what Danny Werfel has done, 15 out of 28. He started, I think, one for nine, so a terrible start for Werfel. And Nick's now nine out of 21, and of course, the two interceptions are big. Yeah, well, those last two passes by Nick were intercepted, and they were converted into touchdowns by Florida, so you have to wonder right now, if you look at Werfel, his, count, or his uh, confidence is soaring. Nick's, he's got a little bit, feel a little bit shaky right now. Out of the shotgun and the play action to Andy Fuller, the tight end. And the big guy is still on his feet, but out of bounds at the 31-yard line. He's still not done. 4-6-2, 258 pounds, and a senior from Huntsville, Alabama. And they have yet to really get him involved in this offense today. Here he is again, though. Caught seven passes against Florida last year. Dropped the pass earlier in this game. But watch him. Once he makes the catch, he has a load. As you mentioned, 260 pounds. He's got a great center of gravity, low center of gravity. Uses that big bulky body to get a couple extra yards. We're in the secondary of the Gators last year for seven catches, 115 yards. His best game of his college career. Again, a smart call. They go to a high percentage pass of their tight end to build Nix's confidence back up. Davis to the 27-yard line. Gain of about three and a half yards. Dexter Daniels. Linebacker out of Valdosta, Georgia, made the stop. This offense for Auburn went through an identity crisis earlier in the year. They didn't know whether they were an I team or a four wide team, and it cost them against LSU. Mm -hmm. Their only loss where they, they really couldn't get it going and never did score a touchdown. They came back, they went back to the eye, they just kind of simplified things, and they let Knicks work within that system to throw. They've been much more effective. Had two field goals against LSU. They got beat 12 to 6 in that game. Second and seven, Knicks. Incomplete, Harold Morrill, the intended receiver, and James Bates, the inside linebacker on the cover. Talk about scoring only six points against LSU, and they lost 12-6, but the Tigers have been on fire since. They've scored over 100 points in the last two weeks. Yeah, if you throw out that LSU game, they came into this one averaging about 53 points a game. But uh, it's been a different story today. The offense of the Florida Gators in the starring role so far. Third down and seven. Ball on the 28 and really a key third down for the Auburn Tigers. They've struggled for their conversions today. Knicks, a lot of time. Oh, it's by Gaucher inside the 10 to the nine. And he was surrounded by white jerseys. Willie Gaucher with the catch in a crowd of Florida defenders. I'm watching 11 Ben Hanks, Lawrence Wright number four. Watch this, I think it's gonna be intercepted. Here comes 24 Weary, the ball is thrown. Now watch Gaucher go up and get it and just pull it away from the Florida defenders that they too thought it was gonna be picked off. Boy, what an explosion by Gaucher in the last two steps to go up and get it. Here's a former high jumper and a track guy in high school. Gaucher with great speed, really coming into his own now. That was a tremendous catch to keep this drive alive. Well, that's the one thing. We talked about Sanders and Bailey being gone from this team. And you know, a little inexperience at the wideout spot, but you got Tyrone Goodson and Willie Gaucher, both with good size and both former high jumpers in high school. And you look at Fred Weary, who was shaken up on that play. You had Wright, Weary, Hanks. All those guys came in. They converged on the ball like it was going to be another Florida interception. Gaucher came out of nowhere in the last two yeah. steps, exploded. Went up high and caught it, took it right away from him. Looked like Weary, who is now up and running off to the sidelines. That's a good sign. It looked like he was he was injured colliding with his own player. Yeah, watch. He goes up so high, he gets undercut. Watch. Whoop, uh -huh. Up and over. Came down. I think he had the wind knocked at him because he landed flush on his back. Willie Gaucher, the junior out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Fourth catches on the afternoon and 53 yards in receptions. And now you've got first and goal at the nine-yard line. And obviously, a very important opportunity here for the Auburn Tigers. Three receivers to the near side. Nix scrambling inside the five to the three. Dexter Daniels stopped him there, but a good game by Patrick Nix on first down. Going to change quarterbacks, too. Damien Craig is going to come in. He's a running quarterback. They're going to do this without a huddle and try to get on the corner. Watch this. You've got Beasley and Davis in the backfield out of the eye, and Damien Craig, who goes in on these situations. Here he comes on the naked. He's going to get in, too. 
Touchdown, Auburn. Damian Craig got there. Tim, no secrets about what they wanted to do. Damian Craig on the foot race to the end zone and a little bit of spark for this Auburn offense. This place is rocking again. You're on defense. You've got to be thinking if they come in with Craig in a hurry like that, they want him to hit the corner. They did. They brought him back. Florida was sleeping. It's 42 to 26. It was just over 10 minutes left in the third. And uh, Auburn's going to try for the two. And they leave Damian Craig in at quarterback. You've got Harold Morrow in there along with Fred Beasley. Morrow in the slot now, right side. Out of the gun. Looking to pass or run. In a world of time. Not anymore. So Florida stops the two-point conversion. They roll out Damian Craig, giving them the option to run or to pass. And great defense by the Gators. So 10-0-3 left here in the third, and Auburn back on the board gives them a little bit of excitement at least. Auburn gets a touchdown on the board. They trail 42-26. They went for two, Tim Brandt. They were denied, but still, they're two possessions away. Two touchdowns, two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. Right. They still need that. Matt Hawkins with a little pooch kick once again. At the 30, Jacques Green straight ahead to the 35 and stopped right there. He only had an opportunity to take it back five yards. And good coverage by the Auburn Tigers. Steve Spurrier sends Danny Werfel back onto the field. And what a turnaround this has been in this game. He started sluggishly, the turnovers early on, and then was on fire in the second quarter. The quick touchdown strike here in the, the third quarter. And looking to keep it rolling. How about this for a statistic? Florida's last four possessions, four Florida touchdowns. Pretty good. <laughs> Hard to beat. <laughs> Out of the eye now at the 36, roll for the throw. The quick out to Anthony. Looks for room to the outside. And has a first down, it appears, up at the 47-yard line. He just did get across that marker. Who so. said the run and shoot is only in football? And I mean, that's, this is like one-on-one -on -one in basketball. You know that? He just puts it out there, leads a guy, and it's one-on-one, -on -one, just like in a basketball game, and lets him run for the first down. Mano a mano. Uh, obviously, that's one of the things that... Steve Spurrier's offense wants to accomplish. You know, put yourself in a position to allow your athletes to do the work. You know, isolate people one-on-one -on -one with defensive backs. They call this the fun and gun, and I'm telling you, folks, they have fun with it. First and 10 at the 47, Fred Taylor straight into the line, and it's ahead for maybe two yards, and let's check in with John Spagnola on the sideline. Terry, Terry Jackson, the running back from Florida, just had a word with him. He's dressed in street clothes, as you can see. He has a mild separation of his AC, his shoulder. He said he'll probably be playing in a couple of weeks against Georgia. You know, you mentioned also that uh, Florida scored four touchdowns in a row in four possessions. Kind of reminds you of the Tennessee game, doesn't it, where they scored six times in the second half and ran away with that football game. Now you're right, 48 straight points against Tennessee when they were down late in that first half. Bounces outside. Fred Taylor up near a first down. Up to the 43 of Auburn. Jerome Evans threw a nice block to spring Fred Taylor that time. You know, you hate to lose it, Terry Jackson, and uh, hopefully the word is correct in the sideline that he will be back in a week or two. But uh, you got Fred Taylor, you got Elijah Williams, maybe no team in college football more suited to uh, losing someone at that tailback spot. Yeah, no question about it. How about Terry's brother? Former great wide receiver Willie Jackson now playing for Jacksonville. And his father played before the Gators as well. All were number 22. Taylor straight into the line and stopped after a gain of one. Auburn right now facing a critical situation. Unable to stop Florida's offense. Auburn now has to somehow get pressure on Werfel. They have not been able to do it. Florida's having its way. We talked about the four straight touchdowns. Right here, they've got a good drive going. Now, all of a sudden, Auburn sets them up with a second down and 11. Second down and long. It's a great situation for the defense, but they've got to capitalize and bring up the third down and long. 
Right now, he's got the advantage. Terry Bowden's got the advantage right now over Steve Spurrier. Let's we'll see what Warfel does on second and ten. And uh, the noise getting louder from the crowd. Warfel has to call timeout to go talk it over with Steve Spurrier. So they will chat on the sidelines, and we'll step aside for this moment. Back in 1983, another one of the memorable matchups between these two schools on the first possession of the game. Bo Jackson breaks through for a 54-yard touchdown run, made it 7-0. Auburn led 21-0 at half. Florida came back, but the win to the Auburn Tigers. I think that guy should have won the Heisman Trophy a couple years later. Huh? This, that picture right there was from his early years. You know, he had over 200 yards that day on just 16 carries. And he was only, what, a sophomore at that point. Second and 10. After the timeout, Werfel and the trick play back to Danny. Up in the air to Anthony. Makes the catch inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. And Timmy, how about the play from the sidelines after the timeout? Both coaches taking time, set up the offense, the defense, the meeting of the minds, and you get the trick play from Spurrier. You know, we were watching both coaches, too, very closely while we were away. And I'm going to tell you something. Spurrier knew that they had the advantage. So he goes to a little trick, a little flea flicker, the handoff back to him. Now, the defensive back gets sucked up just slightly. Now, watch this. The bobble, boom, boom, boom. Does he have possession? Yes. Because in college football, you only need one foot down inbounds when you have possession. Now, he does bobble it unquestionably. One, two. All right, now he pulls it in here. There's his foot. Yep. Bingo. He's inbounds. That's a great call. Outstanding play and concentration by Green. And they get the first down. In fact, he had two feet inbounds by the time he had possession. So, concentration by Riedel Anthony and uh, Bruce Troy. Nice look. Our director, Ben Harvey, our producer today. Uh, an outstanding crew here covering this game. And Charles Rose, the defensive back for Auburn, injured along the sideline on that play. I'm going to tell you, you won't win many football games when you start giving up first downs when it is second down and 11 or third down and long. You've got to make those stops. Well, you had two players banged up on that play. Martavius Houston, the strong safety, also injured, along with Charles Rose. So it's two key losses for the Auburn Tigers. First and ten. Actually, maybe first and goal at the ten. Taylor. Ball squirts out to the end zone. And the Tigers recover in the end zone. There is a flag back at the 12-yard line. That's the old Stabler rule. Could not be recovered by an offensive player and advanced. This just had to be fallen on in the end zone. It was recovered by Auburn, but we're waiting to see what the flag will be. We had an illegal shift. More than two pe people moving in the backfield. It's declined. The first down. Huge turnover by Florida, and Auburn gets a, gets a break. Watch this. Now, he's got a huge hole right here. All right, once he breaks that tackle, but he gets stripped on the way through. Look at all the blue jerseys come flying in. That's great pursuit, great recovery by the Auburn Tigers. And that is dodging a bullet right there. Look like Marcellus Mastello's had a terrific year for this Auburn Tiger defense who stripped Taylor of the ball. Number one tackler on this defense. And again, turnovers playing a big role in this game as they have played the last two years. Auburn taking over in its own 20. Here's Stephen Davis. Bounces ahead close to the 25-yard line. Keep in mind, we said earlier, Auburn could not panic. You still have 7-15 to go in the third period. You're only down two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. These are two very explosive teams. This game is far from over. Just tell your kids, stay within the game plan. We'll call the plays. You just execute. They needed a big play from their defense, and that's exactly what they got. And how about the guy that comes up with it? Mostella, he had four sacks last week. He has, you, as you mentioned, the leading tackler. I think he's one of the top outstanding linebackers, outside linebackers in the country. Second and five at the 25. And Nix pitches back to Davis. Sweet right. Looking for room, and he has a first down across the 30 to the 31. Mike Harris, the free safety, made the stop, but they will move the chain. Stephen Davis, who last week had the most carries of the year, 20 carries for 162 yards, and hit a lot of work here in the second half. 
18 carries 74 yards here in this game. They really need him to step up because if they can get Davis going, which they have here in the second half, it just opens up everything else for Terry Bowden's offense. Fred Beasley and Davis, the backs operating out of the eye. Goodson and Gauthier, the receivers. Mix. Straight drop. And broken up. The intended receiver, Andy Fuller, but broken up by Mike Harris. And a split second sooner, he would have had the pick. You know, Nix just does not look decisive today. He's taking too long. He's looking at his receiver. Watch this. He's looking, 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 looking. Now he throws. And he doesn't even throw it with a lot of velocity. It's almost like he's not sure of himself and not very confident. Usually a defense tries to dictate what the offense does, but Auburn tries not to stand for that. They run that eye with one of the best running backs in the country. If you load up to stop that, if you stack it, Auburn goes to that four wides or the split back pro set, the West Coast offense. Next on second and ten, rolling, throwing Willie Gauthier at the 39-yard line. A yard, yard and a half short of the first down, but Gauthier's had a busy afternoon. And Nick threw that one with some velocity. Boy, I tell you, he threw up, threw that ball up for... Uh, a lot of speed on it. Just zipped it right in there. Five catches on the afternoon for Willie Gauthier. No huddle. New quarterback. Here comes Craig again. Third and one. Craig straight ahead to Beasley. Stopped right at the line. I'm not sure he got there. Mark Campbell met him right at the line of scrimmage. Well, that surprised me. They came in again with Craig. Florida was all jammed in there. They had eight, nine guys in the box from uh, tackle to tackle. You'd think they'd go to the corner with the play. Fourth down and less than one. They're going to go for it. And you make your decision as well whether or not you're going to put Patrick Nix back in or leave Damian Craig. And there's Nix waiting on the sideline. And Terry Bowden wants to talk it over. Not only that, but how about this? The officials now all of a sudden say, wait a minute, let's bring the chains out and see how far this is. Let's see if we do have a first down here. I think Auburn actually called for the chains to come yeah. out. Terry Bowden wants to know exactly how much he has left hit the first down it's just about a foot so right now the defining play of this game and whether or not Auburn is going to stay in this thing it's 42 to 26 there are two touchdowns two two extra points away from tying this game up with 518 and counting left in the third defensively two things you have to look for fourth down and short especially in Auburn's own territory number one the long count that tries to draw the defense off and tries to get the automatic first down on the offsides. The other thing is, too, well, here Auburn's going to take a timeout. They weren't sure which quarterback they wanted. Craig came in. Nix came off the sidelines and actually called the timeout. Mm -hmm. Well, and what they want to do offensively is dictated by who, whom they have in the game as well, a quarterback. Well, tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, it's a special edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Shannon Miller and our country's best go head-to-head -head with the world stars at the World Gymnastics Championships from Japan. That's tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Let's go very quickly down to John Spagnola with an injury update. Well, a quick report on the two injured safeties for Auburn. Charles Rose twisted his right ankle. They're taking the tape off, putting some back on. They're going to try and get him back in the lineup. Martavius Houston banged up his knee and also cut his shin. He will go back into the football game, Terry. All right, John. So good news for Auburn, at least. You got Houston back, and it doesn't look that serious for Rose. And they were, were both injured on the same play moments ago. Taping the ankle on the outside. I used to tape my ankle on the outside only because it looked good. It does. <laughs> it, you know, it, uh, as a youngster, you always do that. But you did it in college. Yeah, it looks like spats. <laughs> you did it at University of Maryland. Fourth and about a foot, Damian Craig, the quarterback in. They pitch it back to Davis. He has the first down, but there's a flag on the play. There is a flag at the line of scrimmage, and we'll see what the penalty is. I think Florida might have been in the neutral zone. Defense lined up offsides. The first down, five yard penalty. Yeah, see, they lined up offsides. They lined up in the neutral zone, trying to cheat for every inch they could get as close to that ball, and they got into that neutral zone flag. 
That's a first down. They move it. And Auburn's got itself a drive going now up near midfield. You still have over five minutes left in the third quarter, so Steve Spurrier not exactly relaxed on the sideline. I'll tell you this, if they score here and make it a one-touchdown ball game, put on your seatbelt for the fourth quarter. Patrick Nix back in at quarterback. McLeod and Davis out of the eye. And the pitch back to Stephen Davis trying the left side. Gets to the outside. Down to the 41-yard line, a big gain on first down, and actually gains another first down. Auburn moving the football. And let's take this moment to take it to New York for an update from John Saunders. Terry, a great one where you are, and in the ACC, a pretty good one as well. Georgia Tech had just scored a touchdown to go up 27-10. Marcus Wall takes the ensuing kickoff, sheds a couple of tacklers, and there it's just a foot race to the end zone. 96 yards. They get the two-point conversion. It's now 27-18. Carolina fighting back. Terry. All right, John. So look at the new turf at uh, Georgia Tech's. Stadium, Bobby Dodd Stadium, here's Stephen Davis tripped up right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. At the ACC, Timmy, uh, some things happened last week. North Carolina with the win over Virginia, and now being beaten at this point by Georgia Tech. If you look at the records of all the conferences, especially playing out-of-conference opponents, the SEC ranks number one, the ACC ranks number two. A lot of people don't realize that. They think Florida State, what a mismatch it is to have a team like that in the ACC. But really, Carolina, Maryland, they've all... No, I think since, well out of since Florida State has come into the league, I think the rest of the ACC has gotten better, but so has Florida State every oh, year. I agree with that. Actually, a loss of one on that last play, and under pressure now is Nix, and he will go down in the backfield. Dexter Daniels was there with the sack. When they move him around, they play him in the middle. Watch 48. This is Dexter Daniels. He kind of cheats, slides, moves, and then comes up. Plays it and look at this. Nix, really, he couldn't throw it away that time. Pressure came untouched from Daniels. But what that does now is brings up third and almost 15, third and a long 14 yards. Not a good situation for Auburn offensively here. A couple of sacks on the day for the Gators. We'll see if they bring him again on third and 14. Go with something underneath, a little back out of the backfield or something. And after the flags covering the field as they blow it dead. So the offense sputtering a little bit after driving for a couple of first downs. We have a dead ball. False start on the offense. The five-yard penalty. Still third down. And Tim, now that's going to bring up third and about 19. Yeah, so defensively now you're thinking draw and screen. And you're thinking about playing soft and knowing where those first down markers are if you're a deep safety. They've got to get all the way down to the 30-yard line for a first. Nix will go back in the shotgun. Four receivers in. Under pressure again, stepping up. Throwing it and complete down to the 23-yard line. Eric Lowe, the freshman from Lake Worth, Florida. Werfel went across the line of scrimmage, though. They're going to have to bring this back. There is a flag down right at the line of scrimmage. You're right. Unbelievable. Boy, what a bad break for Terry Bowden offensively. They moved the ball down the field, and now the big completion, and Danny, or uh, Patrick Nix crossed the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage was just inside the 49-yard line. And he was awfully close. Hey, what he was doing, too, is stepping up in the pocket. Mark Campbell had pressure on him again. Quarterback was beyond the line of scrimmage. Be an illegal forward pass. The five-yard penalty. Loss it down. Terry, watch this. You won't believe it. Just beyond the logo in the 49-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Here comes uh, Nix. Boom. Yep, no Boy, I don't know. That was awfully close. But from my angle right here, it looked like he was across the line of scrimmage when he threw it. That's why I said it originally. Looking at the backside there, Looking at the backside, I'm not sure anymore. That end zone look, he was awfully close. All academic at this point. It was called. So you've got fourth and 24 after the loss of down. Hawkins under pressure. Gets one off, and this is another good one. Anthony lets it go, and it takes a, an Auburn bounce as it comes back to the 11-yard line. That did not go forward into the end zone, and that's a 
fortunate bounce for the Auburn Tigers. One of 43 yards, and it's down at the 11. Don't forget, coming up next, the second half of our college football doubleheader. We've got some good ones for you. Traditional rivalry, Oklahoma against Texas. Ohio State, Wisconsin should be a great matchup in Washington State and USC. Check your local listings for the game in your area and call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. Next up on ABC Sports. So 2.16 left in the third quarter here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. And in the first half, we got everything we expected and a little bit more from the Florida offense going 35 points. Getting it now 42 to 26. And Danny Werfels had an outstanding afternoon. 17 out of 30. 326 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. This offense, the Gators offense is amazing. Average 43 points a game last year. 69 touchdowns. That's phenomenal production. A lot of these guys who were here last year only get better. And boy, I tell you, it's it's corny, but they carry a lot of confidence with them in this offensive scheme. Uh, you know a lot of that comes from Steve Spurrier, too. I mean, that, the intangibles of being a coach who won the Heisman Trophy and got it done on the field himself. Straight ahead to Elijah Williams. Across the 25 to the 26. Jason Miska there on the tackle. You know, as you look at the scores on the screen, let me tell you, Florida lost Jack Jackson to the NFL. Aubrey Hill is gone. A lot of people thought there would be a big drop-off in the passing game. But it's not only the players. I think it's Spurrier's system. His offensive scheme, it works, and the players are interchangeable. But there's enough talent in Florida to keep the machine running. And for Steve Spurrier, it just continues to work. How about the Duke score? 21 to 10, leaving Virginia at this point. The Blue is pulling off an upset right now, at least. Pass out to Chris Dorn. And a first down across the 22, where the marker is, up to the 24-yard line. Larry Melton on the coverage and the tackle. Terry, see, there's a great case in point. We were just talking about the players being interchangeable in Steve Spurrier's system. During is a former walk-on. Mm -hmm. There is so much talent there. They step in. And with the speed and depth that he has, this offensive machine continues to work. Well, you've got Doring, who is as reliable as they come at the wideout spot. You've got Redell Anthony with great speed. Ike Hilliard, who is a leading receiver on this team. And then young speed with Jacquez Green, Sorolla Palmer. And a lot to work with. Palmer, a senior, not young, but certainly got the wheels. Williams up to the 26-yard line. Anthony Harris on the tackle. And... A little bit of a switch now. Florida going more and more to the ground game with the lead. Look at Georgia up on Vanderbilt. That's a big game as far as Ray Goff is concerned. He's under a lot of pressure. Down in Athens. Athens. Seems like he has been for the last five years. And the rest of your scores. And of course, John Sanders keeps us updated throughout the afternoon. Mobley and Williams out of the eye now in second and seven. Werfel off play action. Over the middle to Went Mobley. And the fullback with a big game. Into Auburn territory and down to the 33-yard line. Dwayne Mobley, the junior out of Brooksville, Florida, on the reception and a gain of 41 yards. Every member of Steve Spurrier's offensive line ought to get a game ball after this game. They're getting Danny Werfel so much time. Look at that. He can just pick things apart. Now, the linebacker is supposed to pick up the back out of the backfield. Mostella, did you see 47? He lost him. Comes clean. Mobley's open. Big game. How about the moves from Mobley? If 5'10", 222 pounds, and he was all over the place. As the final seconds of the third quarter begin to tick down. And Florida with the lead, 42-26. We are back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Things are much different right now as we begin the fourth quarter of play than they were at the beginning of the game. For one thing, Florida on top big time here, 42 to 26, but blue skies and sunshine. Unlike the rain we had early, but here comes Florida threatening again, and Auburn hadn't stopped him yet. Anthony in motion, and the give straight ahead to Williams, and he's got room to the near sideline, trying to get to the end zone. Knocked out of bounds at the six-yard line. The quick hitter to Williams 
and he busted inside the 10 to the 6, a gain of 26. Here's another one of those guys. He's 5'10", 190 pounds, and look at his quicks. Again, he gets that big hole, breaks to the outside. There's no flood control. Now, where's the contain guys out there? Cornerback's gone. The safety's already run out of the play, and Williams takes it all the way down to the 6-yard line. Right now, there's absolutely no confidence on this Auburn defense. They're hanging their heads. They're not running to the football, and Florida's having its way. 74 yards now for Elijah Williams. First and goal at the six. Danny Wolf will try to change the play. Play action. Side steps. Touchdown wow. going. How good are they, huh? How many options do you want in your offense against a defense like Auburn? That's been solid all year. Chris Doring with another touchdown catch. And this is an offense that comes at you from so many different directions. You know, Doring to me looks a lot like Chris Collinsworth. Watch 28. He's tall, he's lanky, does this little sleep move. Now watch, boom, explode to the inside. Here you go, there's the explosion, there's the wide open field, here's the throw, and there's the touchdown. And I want to tell you, Danny Werfel did a marvelous job to avoid a rush, threw off balance, he's got a rocket ship for an arm. Chris Doring, five catches on the afternoon, 77 yards, and three touchdowns. Edmiston on again, with a sore leg at the end of the day. And the extra point, the Gators continue to roll, 49 to 26 over Auburn. Ohio State meets Wisconsin in a Big Ten battle. Oklahoma takes on Texas, or Washington State tackles Southern Cal. Part of an ABC College football doubleheader, next. Old-fashioned shootout here. But Florida doing most of the shooting and Chris Doring with three touchdowns in the afternoon. You know, we were talking about how he's, he runs and kind of as the type of receiver that Chris Collinsworth is. Look at that picture on the sidelines. He even looks like Chris Collinsworth. He does, doesn't he? Can he host a radio show and do commentary? Now? The big question. A lot of work for these fellas as well. Robert Baker taking it back to the 20. Stood up. Still on his feet. And they whistle it dead. The ball came out, but... It was blown dead, and now a flag comes in late, though. And they're still scrambling. I don't know what the flag is this time, but I can tell you they didn't stop on the whistle. Well, Baker wouldn't go down. They continued after the whistle was blown. Let's see if it's a late hit or a face mask or something, but they didn't stop. We have a dead ball foul, personal foul, on the white team. Be 15 yards, be first down. Yeah, see, personal foul, they just did not stop and whistle. They kept going. Well, they move it 15, and it'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. That's where Auburn will start. And offensively, the men who get it done on the sidelines, the Bowdens, T-squared, Tommy and Terry. Tommy up in the booth, the offensive coordinator, and he is on the radio, the headset down to Terry throughout the entire game. Terry, the head coach on the right. Shotgun, Patrick Nix looking for room, and it throws it away. Harold Morrill, the intended receiver, and Nix went down after he threw that one out to the sideline. Let's go down to John Spagnuolo on the sideline. Well, you saw the communication link up between brothers Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, and head coach Terry Bowden. Terry Bowden told me they're usually in sync in their calls during the uh, course of the game. They usually are, uh, have the same play on one another's mind. But Tommy Valen said occasionally a bad call is made, and we're not sure who made that call. Well, he has an answer now. He said he tapes all of the conversations during the course of the game with his brother, the head coach, Terry. Do you think he grew up in the Watergate era, guys? Yeah, that's, that's brotherly love and trust. How many gaps are in that tape, huh? He said against LSU, too, in which they score only six points. He must have been unplugged throughout the entire game. Terry never, never talked football over Thanksgiving dinner at home. Big game by Nix in a first down and a late flag again. After the penalty on the kickoff, it comes in late once again. We have a five-yard face mask on the defense. The five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, see, that'll get Steve Spurrier going now. They've got this big lead, 49-26. He does not want them to lose concentration. Wants them to maintain their discipline. And right now on this drive, they've lost a little bit of that discipline that carried them to that big lead. Personal foul on the kickoff, and then the uh, face mask, only five yards. And into Florida territory. So the ball at the 48-yard line. Mix with Beasley and Davis in the backfield out of the eye. The 
Pitch to Davis. Cuts back. Ahead to the 38 and close to another first down. And don't forget, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. And coming up after the game, if time permits. Terry Bowden says the big difference between Bo Jackson and Stephen Davis, Bo routinely produced the big plays, the 50 and 60 yard runs, and that's what Davis has got to do more of. His longest play coming into this game, just 36 yards. Had 162 yards overall last week with a bunch of 10 yard runs, but they say he's got to break some of those big ones that Bo used to break. Really not a runner who gives you a lot of shake and bake. No. I mean, he's going to go straight ahead. He's going to use his body and very strong. Got 100 yards on the afternoon. Look at Army. Back in this one against Notre Dame, only a seven-point game. Boys from West Point have climbed back into it. Straight ahead. There goes Beasley inside the 25 to the 24. You talk about using your body, being a punishing runner. Fred Beasley, the fullback, with a big game. And the move change again. I tell you right now, Lawrence White got his button pushed by Beasley. Beasley is 205 pounds, played tailback last year. Fullback now. Watch this now. And this is something these guys are going to see in tapes. Well, that was Mike Harris, the free safety initially, who got his bell rung. But Harris uh, went down, and Lawrence Wright went uh -huh. down. Both those guys are going to get dogged during taping. First level pass inside. There goes Davis inside the five, leaping to the two. First time we've seen that all afternoon. This has got to be encouraging for Auburn and especially for the coaches. Their guys are not quitting. Safe is playing football. The old Utah pass. Just throw it underneath. If he drops it, it's incomplete. You don't have a chance of a fumble. They get it underneath. Davis makes a big gain out of it. And they're ready to score. Damian Craig back in at quarterback on the right side into the end zone and a touchdown. Fred Beasley with the carry and a two-yard touchdown run. And you're right, Tim. Well, whether or not they have an opportunity to put more points on the board and make a comeback here, certainly you know, this one isn't over, but you have to be happy about doing positive things after having some tough breaks go against you. We saw some good power running, a lot of explosion. You have 12.50 left in the ball game. They've got to go for the two-point conversion here. And then they still need another touchdown and a field goal. Yep. And let's be honest, the way things have gone the last three matchups between these two, that's certainly not out of the realm. Oh, no, not at all. And I guarantee every coach knows those numbers. They know exactly what they need and how to get it. Damian Craig stays in. As they go for two, here he comes rolling to the near. Can he get to the corner? No. Denied right at the end zone. At the goal line, he is pushed out of bounds the second time that Craig has tried to get in. Trying to go for the two points. So with 12.50 left in this one, it is 49 to 32, Florida. November 2nd, 1985, with seven and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, Kerwin Bell hits Ray McDonald for the touchdown pass, Florida, getting the win 14 to 10. And that win gave Florida its first ever number one ranking. The Gators finished the season ranked fifth in the AP poll. And right now, of course, Timmy, they're ranked third. The number one team in the nation, Florida State, rolling this afternoon over Wake Forest. And the Gators up handily here. Greedell Anthony staying inbound. Down at the 19-yard line. And next Saturday, the regional action starts at 3.30 Eastern on ABC's College Football. Georgia Tech taking on the number one team in the country, Florida State. Kansas State battles Nebraska, and Grambling State meets Jackson State. There's other regional action here as well. So check your local listings for the game in your area. Then at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, game one of the World Series. That's all next Saturday here on ABC Sports. How about the Braves? A lot of people in this area of the country excited about Maddox's win last night, leading 3-0. Of course, the Reds are shell-shocked. No team has ever come back from that deficit. 3-0 deficit to win. Braves definitely in control. Pretty good series on the other side, too. Speaking of shocks, Seattle with the win last night. They go up 2-1. On first down, Fred Taylor straight ahead. He picks up a first down across the 30 to the 32. No 
Although Fred Taylor, Elijah Williams doing a lot of work there in the second half. And Danny Werfel now has four touchdown passes in this game, and he has passed Kerwin Bell on the all-time list. The SEC career touchdown pass list. And what a career he's had. Boy, isn't that the truth? He's thrown for over 5,000 yards. He's strapping, blonde, blue-eyed, square-jawed, gracious. Guy has a 3.7 grade point average. His dad is an Air Force chaplain. And besides that, he can play. <laughs> First down at the 32. Here comes Taylor. Gain of maybe two out to the 37-yard line. But you think about that. 57 touchdown passes. And he split time last year with Terry Dean. Let's go down to John Spagnola. From the field here, guys, an observation from the field is, you know, and the few losses Florida has suffered over the last couple of years, they have not been able to close out games in the fourth quarter. They were up 31 to 3 to Bobby Bowden's team in Gainesville last year. And then last year against Auburn at home, they also were not able to close out that game, and Auburn came back. They're going to the running game right now. We're just going to see if they can close out this game and run out the clock. Yeah, that's a great point, too, because that's a dimension consistently that Florida maybe hasn't had in their offense. They had a gain of maybe one. Fred Taylor falling ahead for that gain. It's going to bring up third and about five. But whatever kind of attack it is, it's a potent one. Look at this. The Auburn third quarter scoring on the year 59 to 7. They had outscored their opponents 23 to 21 in the fourth quarter. They're being outscored. Yeah, those two are related because of the big surge in the third quarter. A lot of times they've got the reserves in in the fourth quarter. But today they've got to go with their starters to see if, in fact, they can play here to finish up a ball game. First down and more into Auburn territory goes Fred Taylor down to the 47 yard line. So here's the ground attack that Steve Spurrier wants to see to be able to hang on to a lead. And Tim, it's not only for this game. I mean, this is something you need to develop down the line. You know you're going to be in a couple of games like this. And it could be against this same ball club in the SEC championship game. These two teams probably will play again. Of course, tonight's game will have a big bearing on that. Florida's pulling for Alabama tonight. And Auburn's pulling for Tennessee. That happens. Now and a half or so, somewhere around there. There goes Fred Taylor bouncing outside. Can he get there? Nope, driven out. Right at the line of scrimmage. Terry, you know you showed us the 1985 flashback between these two clubs. Did you know in 1983, the game between these two teams, it was the greatest college talent ever assembled on one field. Listen to this. 52 guys from that game alone went on to the National Football League. 26 from each team. Can you imagine that? Not bad. Including a Heisman Trophy winner two years later. And Bo Jackson. Now, Tennessee, I believe, has the most players in the NFL from the SEC. I think 35 at this point. But these two schools very similar. Both have, I think, 24, 25 players in the NFL. Currently, Elijah Williams fighting his way inside the 40 to the 39. And two things look like they're going on right now. The ground game really coming into a fruition for Florida. And maybe the Auburn defense very tired, especially up front. It sure looked like at that time because they didn't run after the initial hit. They didn't get a whole lot of help, and Williams was allowed to do the second effort, get three or four yards. So instead of third down and long, because of his second effort, it's going to be third down and short. And that's all because the defense didn't run to the football and give some help. Yep. 9.53 and counting. A sold out Jordan Harris Stadium here in Auburn, Alabama. And this Tiger crowd still in the game. Williams? No. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. You now, a week ago, Hurricane Opal swept through this area and really caused a lot of damage. You know, we saw trees down everywhere and you know, so much of the effort over the last week to put this area back together. Canceled the game last Thursday night and they played it on Saturday against Mississippi State. And they had about 77,000 last week, and of course, a sellout this week. Good point, Terry. This will bring up fourth down and short. Spurrier wants to go for it and get the first to close him out. And now Werfel will call timeout. This has happened on both sides. Throughout the afternoon, they'll talk about it. They'll have fourth and two at the 39 when we come back. 
CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Hitachi, which makes over 20,000 innovative products. Burt Plus Shampoo and Conditioner, great hair, no fuss. The NASDAQ Stock Market, the stock market for the next 100 years. And the document company Xerox, a simpler way to do good work. 8.55 left in this one. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, John Spagnola. Fourth down and two at the 39 for Florida to keep this drive alive. And the crowd alive. Warfoot to the shotgun. A good eight yards deep. He's just trying to draw them off sides. Good discipline by Auburn. Yeah, he went eight yards into the backfield and just trying to get the penalty, and then they'll back it up to punt it away. Back here with 8.55 left, and actually we will stay right here as Florida will punt it away. They back him up after the penalty, the delay of game. And Danny Warfel just trying to draw the defensive line off sides. And after the timeout, Steve Spurrier wanting to do that. So now Robbie Stevenson comes on for the punt. A low line drive kick towards the corner. And down to inside the 10 at the 6-yard line. And Auburn will be backed up. And let's take it to New York. Check in with John Saunders. John? Terry, an amazing finish between Notre Dame and Army. Ronnie Makeda to Leon Gant takes this one in to make it 28 to 27. They go for the two-point conversion and the victory. Makeda to Ron Lashinsky, stopped by Ivory Cummington on the goal line. So Notre Dame and the Irish survive 28-27. Terry. John, what a tackle. How about the luck of the Irish two weeks in a row? Luck, skill, whatever you want to call it. They beat Washington last week in a great game and now stopped the two-point conversion. That was a great tackle at the goal wow. line. Looked like uh, Kenny Houston and Walt Garrison. Yeah. What was it, Stony Clark last year in the Texas Texas Oklahoma Oklahoma game. Game. Yeah. With a great tackle to stop the touchdown. Knicks incomplete. James Bates broke it up. The intended receiver, Fred Beasley. And Mark Campbell was in the end zone and almost had Patrick Nix on the ground. Auburn's got to pick up the pace a little bit now. The clock stops because of the incompletion. But Nix has to get him in and out of the huddle. And if the clock doesn't stop on a running player, if a receiver gets caught in bounds, he's got to get him up to the line. Time is a definite factor now as far as Auburn's concerned. Marone Goodson to the near side and really goes Shea to the far. But here comes Stephen Davis. Looking for a hole, still looking, and wrapped up at the 12-yard line. Okay, they've got to be in their two-minute hurry-up offense now. They've got to bounce off the ground, get lined up, and get things going here. You're under eight and a half minutes to go, and you're down a bunch. That's 49 to 32, and you are down a bunch, but... At this point, you don't you don't cash it in. It's still absolutely not. You're two touchdowns and a field goal out of this ball game, and with eight eight minutes to go, this kind of explosive offense, you know, that's not out of the realm of possibility. But they've got to utilize the clock better than they're doing now. So Nick's on third and six. Now back to the gun. Morrow in there along with Beasley. A lot of time for Nick's. Over the middle, complete. To the 30-yard line, Tyrone Goodson, the sophomore out of Brooksville, Florida. And a big first down for the Auburn Tigers. Big thing here is Florida's gone to a prevent defense, so they only rushed three guys. Nick's had plenty of time, and he let his receiver come clear. Now, Goodson sees that, drifts across the middle under the zone. It's a soft zone. It's a prevent defense. A lot of times, only the prevent defense prevents you from winning. <laughs> I mean, you've got you've got to take advantage of that and hit those those creases. And that time he did. Yes. Next did. So many people dislike that prevent defense. They seem to give up big chunks of yardage. 18-yard gain on that play. Nicks to the air again. Incomplete. Jesse McCovery, the tight end, was the intended receiver, and Anton Lott on the coverage. It's all right. Take your shots here. Incompletion stops the clock again. It's 7:23. But they've got to be clock conscious right now, and it doesn't look like they, the players are. I mean, I'm sure the coaches are. Nick's trying to direct his players on the field. Some coming off, some going on. It's 
clock not running after the incompletion, so you have some time here. But you're right, it doesn't seem like they're in that much of a hurry here, too. It has to be more of a sense of urgency, and Nix has to know that. You know, he's the son of a high school coach. His dad has got him well schooled. He's got to get him going here. Hit as he threw, and it went right behind Robert Baker. That ball just out of the reach of Baker behind him. Patrick Nix nailed in the backfield. Johnny Church was in on top of him. Now, the other difference is, too, when you're down like this and time's getting away from you, third down, you know, you've got two more shots for the first. You don't have to kick anymore on fourth down, so he's got two shots to go 10 yards. Now, they have to get to the 40-yard line. So, two incompletions, and that leaves him with third and 10 at the 30. Willie Gaucher just coming onto the field now, near side. A lot of time and back to Kevin McLeod fighting for a first down just short. He's about two yards short, but now another flag comes in late. This will be an incidental face mask five yards. And if they're not careful, they may get another penalty on the sideline. Steve Spurrier obviously without the visor. It either goes to the ground or he takes it off and it's in his hand. He is not a not at all happy with the call. Fred Weary on the tackle. We have a five-yard face mask against the defense. The five-yard penalty at the end of the run, that'll be enough for a first down. No question it's incidental. Watch it. It just kind of drapes across. See right, right here? Boom. Got it. It's still on there, really. Yep. Stayed with it quite a long time. Maybe fortunate it wasn't 15. See, Steve doesn't want to accept that. It was definitely a face mask, but sideline's got to be careful not to tag an extra 15 onto it. So it's a first down at the 43 now. And Nick's out of the shotgun again. Maybe he'll stay there for most of the remaining six and a half minutes. To the air, incomplete, and Baker was well covered by a lot. Baker was well covered, and McLeod was wide open. No chance to get the ball to Robert Baker. I mean, he had Anton Lott there. He had Lawrence right underneath him. Double coverage here. Just get their feet tangled up. But underneath, you saw a shot of McLeod coming out of the backfield. He was wide open because both DBs, both defensive backs, went with Baker. Patrick Nix, 15 out of 34 today. And he He's thrown for 220 yards. The one touchdown was at two interceptions as well. And Hanks came on the blitz. Somebody picked him up. And now down goes Nix as he throws the ball over the middle. Ed Chester was there in on top of Patrick Nix. James Bates got away with pass interference, too. Nix had to throw in a hurry because of the blitz coming. And Bates had the receiver wrapped up while the ball was in the air, but they never threw the flag. Well, the crowd saw it and wanted it. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, watch 44. See him right there in the middle left hand of your screen. All right. He'll come back. Now, watch him grab the receiver when the ball's in the air. Zoop. Well, you can't see it underneath there, but take my word for it. I will. I believe you, Timmy. I don't doubt you. Third and ten down goes Nix just off the hands of Tyrone Goodson. Boy, and Patrick Nix just took a beating in the backfield. Ed Chester again was in there and... Uh, He's getting all too familiar with Patrick Nix. At least the Nix like it. Just outside the reach of Goodson. That's how close it is. They're really coming with a lot of heat now. Remember they were in a prevent. Now they're bringing some heat with four guys down. Uh, and I mean, he's getting punished. That was Ed Chester, 94. He missed three games because he had a, a dislocated uh, right elbow. Telling he gets in now, he's just a freshman, and he just laid a lick on Nix. Yeah, he had the knee injury too. He had a lot of guys in his defensive front. Johnny Church was out a while, Willie Rogers out a while. Fourth and ten, they're going for it over the middle, incomplete. And again, guess where Patrick Nix is? He's watching from his backside. Turn out the lights. Party's over. Yes, it is, but I wasn't sure we'd have that that extra from Tim Brandt today. 49-32, Tim, and we knew we'd have a shootout, but uh, I'll well, tell you what, Florida's been awfully impressive today. That's what's coming up next, second half of our doubleheader, Oklahoma and Texas, number 13 and 18.
Ohio State, Wisconsin, Washington State, USC. So check your local listings for the game in your area and call your cable operator. The game's available on pay-per-view. Great lineup coming up next here on ABC. 81 points scored in this game. We still have six minutes left. <laughs> Fred Taylor off the right side, gain of about four. And uh, Taylor and Williams getting all the work in the second half with Terry Jackson, the starting tailback, going out with a shoulder injury. And we had the report earlier from John Spagnola that it is not that serious. He may miss a week or, or maybe two, but should be back in short trip. Florida's about to go to 6 and 0. Oh. And of course, you look at Florida State, you look at Nebraska, some question their schedules. Here today, Florida State against Wake Forest. One thing about the Gators, ranked third in the country, is they've got a tough schedule. Playing in the SEC, week in and week out, you're playing quality clubs. Of course, next week they go to Georgia and take on the Bulldogs. Between the hedges. Flags thrown, and uh, this play stopped as Fred Taylor got the handoff. And Nebraska shutting out Missouri at the half. We have a dead ball, the false start on the offensive line. It'll be five yards, repeat the second down. You know what's amazing to me here with a 49-32 lead, Steve Spurrier is acting like he's down six. <laughs> no, I'm serious, and that's why he's such a great coach. His team's making a lot of mistakes now. They're making mental errors, face masks, all sides, illegal procedures, late calls. And look, he can't figure it out. That's, that's when a team has to have discipline. They can't lose that mental edge. Well, it is amazing, coaches. You know, you get a shot of Steve Spurrier, a big win here today. He's got five, 19 and counting, and uh, he does. He looks like the coach who's on the losing end of it. You ought to play golf with Steve. He's just as intense. No, thank you. That's what I hear. Wolfel to Fred Taylor again. Wrapped up as he crosses the 40 to about the 38-yard line. To KO Spikes made the tackle. You see the Illini trailing Michigan State in the fourth. And Georgia Tech hanging on to that lead right now. They were up bigger than that. It's now a two-point game. You know, Terry, when we talked about the national title contention for uh, Florida with Steve Spurrier earlier this week, didn't even want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, right. almost kind of the hair rose on his neck because in the Gators' national title run, they have Auburn today, they play Florida State later, then they have the SEC title game, all those huge obstacles before they even get to talk about the national championship. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the old axiom, I know it's a cliche, but he mentioned it one game at a time, and you have to take it that way when you have that kind of schedule. And this is a game he could not get past the last two years, whether it was at home or here at Auburn. And uh, today he is defeating... Harry Bowden for the first time. Nine straight road victories for Steve Spurrier's Florida Gators. The last loss was here in 93 against Auburn. He's about to go 10 straight road wins. The Tigers take a timeout, and we will too. 414 left in this one. Florida up big. Now we got up this morning, and there was a heavy rain outside our window, and uh, it's cleared at this point. It rained as this game began through most of it through the third quarter, and now not a blue sky, but not over on the Auburn sideline. They had high expectations and certainly didn't downplay the fact that this was the game of their year. Wide open. And now broken up. He was open early. You're exactly right. Mike Hilliard was out there. Del McGee broke up that pass. Yeah, put that in completion on Werfel because Ike was open. He had to hit him on the break. He gave the defenders time to come in and close and knock it away. That's what Steve Spurrier just told him. Yeah, one, of, one of the few times that Werfel has uh, made a mistake today. I mean, early on, he struggled a bit, but yeah, he got off to a shaky start, but has been on fire ever since. Danny Werfel was 3 for 11, 66 yards and an interception in the first quarter. Since then, 17 out of 23, 316 yards and four touchdowns. Not a bad afternoon. Danny Craigman, a quarterback, throws it out complete to Eric Lowe. Up to the 39-yard line. The freshman out of Lake Worth, Florida, on the catch. So Damian Craig takes over for Patrick Nix here on this last series. We've seen Craig a couple of times near the goal line. And he has scored once today over 
the middle to Robert Baker, complete, across the 45 to the 46. You know, it's interesting to see how uh, Terry Bowden really is, follows his dad. You know, his dad started using the quarterbacks, the backup quarterback in short yardage situations as a way to get him in and get him used to big play situations so that when he developed and it was his turn to start, he'd be ready. Other coaches have gone to that. Terry Bowden's one of them. I know they do it at the University of Maryland with Mark Dubner. We saw it at Tennessee this year. Good philosophy, and it's a it's a fairly new philosophy because in the old days they didn't want to take the chance on a new quarterback coming in with a bad exchange. Greg throws on the run, complete to Baker again up to the 46-yard line of Florida. And here's a guy in Damian Craig, not only in short yardage situations, but a couple of the coaches for Auburn have told people this guy is going to be a heck of a quarterback over the next couple of years. He's only a sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama. You've got Patrick Nix who moves on after this year. He's a senior, and uh, this is a young man who's not only getting that experience, but also uh, he can throw the football. Forget the little runs from two, three yards out. Eric Hines Tucker on the carry, his first of the day. As we continue to roll in the scores, a lot of action elsewhere. Another irony of this game is the fact that Auburn averages 28 points a game when when they they run the ball effectively. I mean, 44 points per game if you look at the whole the whole scheme of it. But out of the pro eye, they average about 28 points just out of that one formation. Today they go over 32 points, so they're below their game average. But they use the the pro eye most of the way here uh -huh. until the fourth quarter. Third and two at the 46. Intended for Eric Hines Tucker, but thrown out of bounds by Craig. Now the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Danny Werfel from the Florida Gators and Stephen Davis, the Auburn Tigers. Werfel, huge day, 20 out of 34, 382 yards, four touchdowns, and Davis with 103 yards on the afternoon and rushing. And it's celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And those are the numbers on Danny Werfel. The interception came early on, Tim, and since then he has been near perfect. A lot of action today in the SEC. Georgia has won over Vanderbilt. And as we look at the updated standings with the Florida win today, they go to 5-0. and Tennessee, of course, plays Alabama a little bit later. That's a huge game. Auburn falling to 3-2. and two. And you've got those three teams. I know Alabama's not eligible, but Arkansas 3-1. and one. LSU 2-1-1 one and one with a win over Auburn. And uh, you know, really a big loss for the Tigers today. It's huge. And now Auburn has to sit back and hope because they definitely want to get in that SEC title game. You know, Florida's trying to become just the second school in SEC history to capture three consecutive outright conference titles. Alabama did it back in the late 70s, 77 to 78, 79, I believe. Haters have already won three of the last four. They're trying to make it three in a row. Awfully impressive today. They had 35 points at the half. They have 49 right now. And uh, tough day, a little bit ironic in that uh, the turnovers late in the first half, early in the second, really hurt the Tigers. And there goes Stephen Davis, a whole lot more than 103 yards on the afternoon. He breaks it to the end zone. A 46-yard touchdown run for Stephen Davis. Pulls it within 11 with 2.01 to go. Watch the block up front first. Pull that guard, get him out front. Get a blocker out of the backfield in front of him. Now watch the cutback to the left. Sees the safety, goes left side, and then it's a foot race. Here's a guy that's 230 pounds and runs a 4-3-40. And look who's down there with him. Damian Craig, the quarterback, 16. Almost got to the goal line at the same time. That's a great shot of Craig running after him. 149 yards now in the afternoon for Davis. And we told you, not the kind of guy who's going to give you a lot in terms of shake and bake and moves left and right, but once he breaks through, he has got a lot of speed. 149 today, 162 last week. He's starting to really come into his own here. Started the season as a Heisman Trophy candidate, but didn't get it that often, so I guess he kind of got out of that race. So Craig looking as they go for two, and down at the 20. They have tried three times. The two-point conversion all three times. They have failed. That time, Tim Bochamp, backup defensive end. Put Craig on the turf.
far as Auburn is concerned, they still know they need a touchdown, two point conversion, and field goal to, to win this thing. Hey, Tim, you've seen Florida State this year. You and I had the, the Florida State Clemson game earlier in the year. I had them against Duke, and the number one team in the country. You, you got to look today at the Florida offense. How do the two compare? What do you think? Well, they're different kind of schemes. That's number one. And this, this one right here, just they let you know right away, we're going to spread you thin, and we're going to pass. And we dare you to stop. You have to make a commitment right, right now. You're going to blitz us. You're going to play us man. You're going to play us head up, or you're just going to sit in a zone. If you sit in a zone, Steve Spurrier says, we're going to find those creases, and we're going to hit it. If you're playing us man, we dare you to cover our guys one-on-one. -on -one. So this is a different kind of scheme where Florida State incorporates more run with it, kind of balance attack, and they'll switch in and out of that pro attack. And they also try to beat you with no huddle, get you out of your rhythm, so you can't defensively change personnel. It is much different in that sense. You're right. They go to the no huddle, and they just try to, to wear you down. And, and especially in the ACC, I mean, they just have better athletes, and, and they're deeper than the ACC competition. And, and nationally, for the most part, they are. But uh, uh, two big-time offenses, and uh, it will be interesting later on in the year. Here's the onside kick, and it's recovered by the Auburn Tigers. Did not go 10 yards. He made contact with the ball before it went 10 yards. That'll be illegal. You're exactly right. It's spotted at the 45. Now watch this. It goes 10 yards, but he touches it before it crosses the line. Here's the contact right here before it goes 10, and then he falls across that line for the 10. Yeah. So that's an illegal touch. That ball has to go 10 yards before you touch it. It's a good pick. Good eyes, Tim Brandt. Just about a yard short of 10 yards on that onside kick. Well, an 11-point game with less than two minutes left. If, if they got that onside kick, you know what I mean? Stranger things have happened, but of course, Florida takes over. Danny Werfel still in. Elijah Williams breaks it. First down inside the 30 to the 29. You know, talking about the difference between the Gators and the Seminoles, Steve Spurrier doesn't care about your personnel. He doesn't care who's in there. He, he'll give you time to put anybody in the ball game you want. And to him, that's a challenge. I'm going to put my offense, my scheme, and we're going to we're going to go ahead and we're going to execute that no matter who you have. Bobby Bowden, on the other hand, believes, hey, let's keep this thing going. We'll stand a two-minute hurry-up offense. We'll keep the same personnel in the field and not let you adjust. Mm -hmm. Elijah Williams, 13 carries in the afternoon, 95 yards. Anthony in motion. And here goes Williams. At the 27, gets down to about the 26-yard line to Kale Spikes. Inside linebacker made the stop there. Well, a new challenge for Terry Bowden now here at Auburn after two losses this year. You know, he had the title of Georgia last year and, and one loss last year. He's undefeated, obviously, his first year. But they were on probation. And so a much different motivation this year when you look to a bowl game, you look at a national championship. Now you deal with a little adversity. I'm going to tell you something. I'm a big fan of Terry Bowden's. He went 21-1 while serving that two-year probation. That's a great tribute to him, his coaching staff, and his players. Williams in the backfield. Loses two. Back to the 29. Yeah, in order to keep your players motivated throughout that two-year span and to recruit and get more players in here at that point. Well, that's exactly right, T. You have to recruit hard, number one, and you're doing that for the present, not the future. I mean, he's got to say, hey, look, the future is now for us. And that's what he did. He actually went down to Florida, got some kids out from Florida State, and uh, the Gators pulled it right out of there. Don't forget about the action coming up after this one. Ohio State versus Wisconsin or Washington State, State USC. You'll get one of those two games. Check your local listings and call your cable operator. The game's available on pay-per-view, so some good action left later this afternoon. Better than 85,000 here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. They expected a, a shootout. They got that, but uh, it was not the close ball game that anyone ex everyone expected. Number three against number seven. We got the points we expected. Yeah, though. we did. Two top explosive two, offenses. Top two offenses in the SEC. 
And certainly Florida proving why they are among the leaders in the nation. And why they're the number three team in the nation. People think about Auburn, their number one rival being Alabama, and that is true. I do believe that. But I guarantee you, this one right here has become almost as big. The operative word has become, too. It did not used to be. I mean, they, this has really gained in intensity over the past four or five years, especially the last two years. You've got the Georgia rivalry, you've got the Alabama rivalry, and certainly this one right there. And the Bowden connection. That's exactly right. <laughs> Bobby Bowden, maybe not the most popular man in Gainesville. But Steve Spurrier, Danny Wolfel right now are. Spurrier with his first win over Terry Bowden. They get it here at Jordan Harris Stadium. And the first loss here at home under Terry Bowden for the Auburn Tigers. Wolfel, an outstanding day, especially from the second quarter on. And the Gators with a huge win on the road here in Auburn. 49 to 38, your score for John Spagnola, Tim Brandt. I'm Terry Gannon. Thanks for watching. So long from Auburn.